Cheers here. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for coming over. Yeah. One year anniversary. Uh, when I first started back at the pod, I was only expecting to do Paula Hangtown in Colorado uh, if they liked it. And that's crazy. That's so, so it was an opening shot for the, if you can pull it up, I think it's on like Peacock. <laughs> All right, testicle, testicle, we're good. All right, guys, we're here, pod 11, with the man, the myth, the legend, Bud Skycam, my boy C Bud over here. He was on podcast two with us, and he is back to tell us about his Peacock TV Supercross motocross experience, SMX, all that. So, uh, how's everything been going with you? And like, before we even Wait. talk about that, yeah, cheers. let's just do a little cheers here. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for coming over. Yeah. One year anniversary. Yeah, yeah. yeah basically, having, two yeah. more weeks will be one year anniversary. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, so, I kind of wanted to just start out and just like ask you how Cheers, everything you is. Drink. Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry. Hey man, apple juice, kids. Apple. It's juice. It's just apple juice, guys. Don't worry. So yeah, so I wanted to just start out by asking you like how everything's been going. I know when we last talked that you were just starting out into the motocross journey and you hadn't even been to Supercross yet. So maybe just start out like by telling us like maybe how that the first experience went with motocross, you know? Yeah, no, uh, when I first started back at the pod, I was only expecting to do Paula Hangtown in Colorado uh, if they liked it. And there was like a chance I could do more, but I didn't really, uh, I wasn't really sure. So yeah, so once I did the, uh, the outdoors, the first couple rounds, I actually had a lot of problems at Hangtown. Hangtown was like really bad. I used their drone at Paula and then I went and uh, I flew mine at Hangtown and I had a bunch of issues. I remember. I yeah, remember. I was, I was stressing out. I was like, everything is going wrong. Yeah, and I your, just... your wife came running over to the booth. And yeah, Jesse was telling me that. She's like, I, it, she was either asking for like another laptop or yep. a battery. I can't remember specifically, laptop. but yeah. And I was like, oh, I felt so bad that I, I didn't have what she needed, you know? She's like, no problem, and just took off. But yeah. she got it done, though. <laughs> yeah, my wife, yeah, shout out to, She's to, a boss. to Erica. Yeah, babe, thank you. Yeah, no, she literally ran. If anybody's been to Hangtown, there's the big hills in the back. She actually ran all the way down the hill into the TV compound, past the TV compound, like out to where you first drop in the hills at Hangtown. Um, her and my sister both got came out and got a laptop and stuff, and was able to get drones up and flying towards the, the, the later part of the races. But, um, yeah, I, I was like, oh, there's never going to hire me again. And then they were like, no, great job. You know, you persevered. You know, you, you kept it together and you got drones in the air. So I went to Colorado. Stressful. And, yeah, I was. Oh, so you were down for a bit. Oh, yeah, time. yeah. I was. Yeah. Well, it was actually like it was right before the motos. I think it was like the, the LCQ to make mm -hmm. it in is yeah. really what was happening. So it was like it wasn't like broadcast time yet. It was mm -hmm. like just about to be. So I got everything going like literally right as the show was starting. So I was able to get drones in the air. Awesome. Um, but yeah, it was like a whole morning after Friday. Everything was perfect. And then Saturday morning, it just uh, it started tanking on me. So um, but then I went to Colorado and everything was great. Like went and flew. Everything was smooth. The other drone pilot was there. He missed Hangtown. So I was I was there by myself. So it was like my second one. And uh, then Colorado went well. And they're like, hey, do you want to do the next? I think it was like they offered me the next four. And that was your trial, right? That yeah, was like, that was, that, yeah, that was, that was the first two. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. that's the thing. I mean, dude, I mean, that's what people see when you're out there and like like anybody else might have just been like, it's over. My laptop's done. Like, I don't have anything, you know, but like that's what people see is when you like overcome that problem. You know, like you said, I don't care what I have to do to get this going. We're doing it. And obviously it was teamwork involved with your wife and I'm sure your dad and all that. Yeah. So, but you got it done. So that's yeah. what matters. Yeah. yeah I'm sure they saw that. So yeah. I Will think you turn him up just like a half click on there? His, uh, mic volume. A little quiet. Is that yeah. better? Yeah. Much better. I don't know if I want to yell. All right. Yeah, cool. No, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that was a big thing. Like I, I, I driving down the hill at the end of the day, I was like driving with my dad in the truck. I was like, well, I just blew it. Everything that went wrong could have went wrong. And then I, I get out and they're like, hey, great job, man. That was awesome. Like, way, way to go. Like, that. I had one of the, the big bosses come up and uh, come over and look at me. And I had drones torn apart. I was soldering things. I was putting stuff together. And nice. he's like, looks like you're doing stuff. And yeah. I was like, yep, I'm, I'm going to make something happen. So well, Us as human beings, we love to think like a uh, worst case scenario, you know, and I know it's hard not to think negative, but it's just like a natural instinct for us sometimes, you know, so that's that, awesome. I, I that think that's another thing, like they are doing that, like think about like what they go through, like on TV and like 
imagine how much they might mess up. I mean, people complain all the time, like, oh, Peacock did this and that. But, like, yeah. do you understand, like, what is going on? Like, this is live. Like, there's no room for error. That's, you know, so them seeing you, like, get through that, and they're like, wow, this guy could be part of the team. Yeah, that was, know? that's a huge thing. I didn't realize, like, on TV, like, listening to, because um, I, I basically have a headphones on with the director, the producer. I'm here and Ricky and all those guys on TV. It's crazy, like, how much is going on. I didn't realize, you know, there's a team of 70-plus people who are just making wow. sure that the stream is going. Yeah. That's not even including anybody that's actually on the track or doing anything else like that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy, like, what's really going on at the races. So that's... Yeah, it opens your eyes a little bit because it's so easy to take it for granted when you're sitting at the house on the couch and it, the broadcast just comes up, you know, and the camera angles switch automatically. So it's... Imagine how many things they have now. Like, we were talking on the last pod, like, it's completely changed. There's, like pictures on the landings like i said there's jet lawrence's face is on the landing yeah, like yeah, imagine how many things they have going on and people just don't get it so know? that's like, so that's actually funny you say that so that's a team so that's a contracted team that they come in and they actually go around before the races and they put little markers in different spots oh, of the wow, track. okay and so I, at first i was like what are you guys doing i'm putting more markers out there and i was like oh all right, I don't get what you, what you meant by that. So but what, then little I RFID writing. or like actual visual? Essentially, visual yeah, markers. and then they'll have the camera zoom in on them and practice or whatnot, That's find cool. that marker, so yeah. then the whole day they can basically click on that spot and put up whatever they need yeah. to at that time. So that's like a, that's something that they brought in that they were using in NASCAR and stuff. And they were yeah, like, and I, I remember seeing from like the NFL, you know, they do that too. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, tech. That's, this, um, that's a company that does them for all of them in – the new guy who's kind of come in and kind of trying to make Supercross a little bit different, one of the big bosses, he brought that in and some other stuff was like, hey, let's let's make it so people outside of the sport see some of this stuff. So it's been cool. Like even like the Spanish thing. I mean, that's a new thing. That yeah, that's doing. huge. I, I saw that's that. Yeah, yeah, people. And then like again, there's people on the comments like this and that and just complaining. Yeah, you know? but it's, it's like, like it's the, crazy to me. It's yeah, like it's a whole nother whole nother. I mean, like, if we want our sport to yeah, grow, hundred percent. Yeah, come and on. That's now. why they're bringing in all these different like drivers like nascar and like all the different yeah. snow the snowboard guy that was just on i forgot his name sorry about that but he was yeah. on last time there's different people from different markets coming in because they have other followers just like podcasters when exactly. they have they're going on all these different podcasts and so that way they take some of the viewers as well like some of these viewers will come back and watch supercross yeah you know? some, of, well, some of the announce one of the guys on the broadcast was talking about it's like kids and when he grew up he never got to see that like, he's actually an old pro from uh from south america i shouldn't say old he's still young yeah but uh he talked about like Nobody, nobody in their family can listen or they understand any of it to now mm -hmm. bring it back to yeah. them. And it's like, why not? Like if that brings more revenue into the stream, makes the broadcast better, makes more purse money possibly for the exactly. riders. Like it's all a huge plus. And it's not having to do anything extra to just bring in a couple guys in. And, well, and there's yeah, people from the other countries coming into race exactly. and those people have fans that maybe want to watch their rider you know persevere totally. in america you yep. know what i mean so it completely makes sense like i i understand marketing so i understand like when they bring stuff like that on like i'm not taking it from like a consumer yeah i'm taking it from like a marketing business person yeah, super you know smart. like this is smart like maybe for the average viewer like hey why is this here but it's like this is growing our sport and that's yeah. what we want like i feel like there could be a lot more money in supercross too especially for the riders i mean like mm -hmm. like bringing in more viewers is gonna possibly bring more revenue for the riders for anybody else the vendors i mean there's it's gonna be more yeah, people bet, yep the higher in the what i've learned is as far as like the quality of streaming like we're nowhere close to what NFL and stuff is. Yeah. And it's because of sponsorship and the more money that comes in, the better that's going to increase the production. Everything's going to go up. It's going to be a win for everybody. So it's it's really cool to be at this time where I feel like it's kind of changing. They're like, okay, let's try these new things. I think that's why they're using the drone so much. They're like, all right, this is something new. I, I've heard words that they're like, hey, you know, we're, we're trying to be on the same level as other higher end sports. So we got to take different chances or look at things of what they're doing too. So. And I've heard Ricky say multiple times during the broadcast now, especially uh, for the outdoors, the motocross season, he was just like blown away at how cool the drone footage was. Like this angle is so awesome. We've never got, had to been able to see these guys from above like this battle in. So it's, it's really awesome. Yeah. Cool. Rick, Ricky's a, a huge reason I think why I'm doing so well. So I've talked to, on lunches and stuff, I'll always try and talk to him, say what's up. And he's been really cool about it. And I'll ask him like, Hey, like, do you want a line of this shot? And then when I first started outdoors, they're like, Hey, don't go under a hundred feet. And then by the final Ironman, they're like, Hey, Chris, go ahead and 
but get some closer shots. Yeah, they yeah. find that, that trust got built. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, and I work with like the safety crew and stuff and we like, we make sure certain lines are approved and things. And so there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. It's not just like, Hey, just go out and do it and just wing it type of thing. But yeah, Ricky's been a, a huge help, like saying, Hey, I want to see this. And then once I hear that in the headphones, like, all right, let's, let's get that shot. So. I don't think people realize like all the stuff that Ricky Carmichael is doing behind the scenes too. It's not like him just in the booth talking. Like I'm sure he's coordinating other things. Like it's a stressful situation. I know personally from being on a microphone, you know, like I don't always get it right. You know, I'm still learning every single day. Every time you get on that microphone and imagine we're just sitting here in a room talking, you know, like he's like, and we're going to live and there's people like criticizing you. You know what I mean? Just like em, uh, Emic back in the day, everybody, would, he got better at his stuttering and stuff, but everybody would just hate on Emic. It's like, bro, like he's trying. Like yeah. They'll you know always I mean? be haters, yeah. you know? That's just a but, certain percent that will always but be You can't out. hate on the GOAT. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I just want to say, that's the last thing I have to say about it, just do not do that. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, Thank you. Yeah, no, people, <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I can't imagine, like, just me listening to what the director and producer, all the stuff that's going in, and I don't know how much those guys can hear. I know they can hear the producer and stuff. But there's like a lot going on and then all the different cameras stuff that's going on. I personally, I couldn't, I'd just fumble over myself. Like right now it's cool. We're just hanging out, you know? Yeah. But like being live on broadcast. Yeah. And, I and bet doing there's that, a level of uh, anxiety to it to be oh perfect, you know? And, and because... there's so many different little like cuts or like interviews or things at certain times that they've pre-planned and rehearsed earlier in the day that it's like, okay, we're going to this. We rehearsed it. Let's go to that. All right, now run across the field and get over here. Get upstairs. Do this. Yeah, like it's see. like all those guys, like uh, JT, man, he's a machine. I Like that dude, they don't need, he's like, I don't want a golf cart. Like he literally will run on the outdoors. We'll run from one side to the other. And they'll just have camera guys like set up for him mm -hmm. and he just runs. I'm like, it's probably quicker. Dude, that's exactly what yeah, he says. Yeah, I was like, like, I was like, but it, to me, I'm like, when you go to these nationals, like Hangtown is very small compared to a lot oh. of nationals, and he'll just cover like the whole field. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, that is crazy because I don't like walking up that hill back down to the next hill because like if I have two booths or something, I, yeah. I ain't walking over to Jesse. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You know, dude, I'm not walking a, to that booth. That's a mission. Like, dude, I'm taking the Grom. Yeah, I'm that's like, a mission. <laughs> yeah, a couple of the camera guys, um, that they, they'll just have a camera on their shoulder and all day, one of them actually lives here close, one of them lives down in LA and I've become good friends with both of them and I'm just like, man, I'm glad I fly the drone. Like, yeah, I just get yeah. to sit there in a chair yeah. under a pop-up, like, you know, get my yeah, AC going. They're out there on the track, basically. Yeah, running. Huh? Yeah. So speaking of the ca the camera guys, like, uh, how, the, how are the regular camera guys, like, interacting with you? Everybody, they're pumped? Or how's yeah, that going? Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. Last year, it was, I was really new, and Daniel had already been uh, flying, but he flies a little bit style, a different drone than I do, yeah. so... The more and, above. Yeah. Zone, yeah. And he's also, he's a little bit more quiet than I am. I'm pretty loud and I'm, I talk a lot. Like they give me, they like talk trash. You know how guys are and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just talk yeah. trash. I talk a lot, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. We talk uh, trash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, no, it was really good. Like I just, I went in there with a super open, open mind. I had a buddy down in San Diego who, uh, has been doing a lot of camera work or uh, lighting work. And he's like, just make friends with everybody. So I yeah. went around and I literally just like. Who are you? Where, who, where have you worked for? How'd you get in this business to everybody? And I met some really cool people. Um, I met one of the main camera guys that does like a lot of the slow-mo. Oh, sick. He's like, uh, I don't know. He's He's been doing this for 30 plus years. He's like, was in the Hall of Fame getting a shot of Brett Favre, like breaking the touchdown wow. record, like running behind him. Like was at like uh, Tom Brady's like Super Bowl shots. Like oh, that's so sick. he's at all these crazy things. And, and now he just does, he does Supercross, part of outdoors, and then he leaves for... The uh, college football. That's okay. his other thing with Fox. That's sick. So I've uh, I, I became good friends with him. He talks a lot of trash. He's from I think he's actually originally from like New York or New Jersey or something like that. So he's got the accent. Oh, they're, they're yeah, he's definitely talking trash. First, yeah. <laughs> first, first time I saw him, I'm not going to use the words, but first time I, I heard him like yell at everybody, I was like, oh man, don't mess with is, that. Yeah, guy. I, was like, I was like, this is he's like six. I'd say he's six five, probably oh, okay. three hundred and fifty pounds massive dude just a giant like can't fit in the cars <laughs> wow. he like has me drive his rental car whenever he can ah, Chris, drive my car That's like funny. it's it's so funny why it's hilarious so but well, i met some really cool guys a couple other guys who i've uh first day a little story about this guy anthony i gotta tell this one um i show up at paula in the morning and i go in for breakfast and there's this short guy like starts getting an argument with some dude at the breakfast and i'm like i don't know anybody there i'm like Dang, this is like supercross and like I or this is motocross and I sit down and he comes sits down and he's like, What the hell's that guy's problem? I was like, uh, I don't know, man. Are, are you guys are you guys all felt? And he's like, Yeah. And I was like, 
okay. Yeah. And then I realized there was just some random dude who was just mad in the morning and left. So every time I see this guy, Anthony, we always, we always make a joke that he just wakes up and fights people. He's, <laughs> like, he's like from That's New funny. Jersey, so... That's but it's a, it's been a really cool experience. Other than that, like, I mean, all the camera guys are really cool. They use a lot of local people yeah. for all the races. Like, I think there's about eight or nine camera guys that they actually ship to everything. And then they'll just use local guys. They'll come in from, like, the news station yeah. or different things like that to Got shoot. It. So, hey, Chris knows the local – or the – people so you know if you be nice to chris maybe he'll get you a job someday yeah. <laughs> i don't know about that but i can try you know you can, I'm just, i just yeah. asked that question because i know like there's politics like in a smaller organization like motocross like just like these series i know there's like different camera guys and i know sometimes like oh you're stepping on my toes kind of things i just was wondering how that is different i know you're third party hired so like i just want to i just want to know like kind of the difference because i know sometimes it's different at the actual track yeah no know? it's i would say it's a lot of them are contracted guys i would say there's probably only a handful that are like salaried guys that mm -hmm. do like that are like feld exclusive that's who i'm contracted under okay. feld yeah um but i think like most of them are like they've just done some camera work with producer director someone in the show at some point and they're like hey they got their name referred so yeah. like just just doing some kind of live tv show and then having your name referred really honestly goes a long ways like that's yeah, that's sure. what i learned I, I, and word of mouth yeah, yeah if i wouldn't have if i wouldn't have talked to daniel the other drone pilot like there's honestly i don't know how i i, I don't know how i would have got in and it, he was like thinking okay chris can be my west coast guy and he had a buddy on the east coast who he was actually going to have do his east coast stuff and after colorado they're like hey do you just want to do them all and i was like yeah i tell me twice so um yeah it's really just word of mouth that's kind of the tough part but yeah that's biz that's word of mouth is one of the best marketing yeah because like, if you're a nice person and people see that you're actually trying you actually love what you do they're going to refer you yeah exactly you know what i mean and uh so if you guys want to know all about supercross is what we're here to do today is talk about his experience with motocross supercross smx all that yeah. um so maybe you could give us like a little rundown on just like day in the life of chris you know like when you get land from the time maybe that you get done like what's going down what do you got to stress on like what do you got to do i know you gotta i know you're in those like meetings with the riders are you, i think you're like there probably no not doing not so much with the riders but like sometimes i'll go into meetings like yeah. the producer and directors like before the races and stuff um i mean basically yeah just fly i fly out thursdays I, in the uh, airport right they give you problems or they give you problems sometimes so that's a, that was that was a, a big i'm finally F, i saw your story yeah TSA, <laughs> yeah man tsa uh a, uh, TSA pre-check now but last year it was like everywhere I went because I take my drones I don't check them I don't trust them I take all my drones all my equipment oh, with carry me. on yep. that's yeah, carry why on. Yep. Yeah. yeah so so sometimes they'll just like open it up they'll take a couple batteries out they'll test the batteries make sure they're not bombs then yep. all right you're good but yeah just recently when I was flying home from I think it was Philly the guy's like he's like all computers out I was like well this is like a drone he goes okay take it out I was like well it's like three drones like goggles chargers all this he was gonna take it all out I was like well that's like 20 minutes worth of unpacking and packing and he's like yeah go ahead oh, and do well. it <laughs> I was like I was like, I was like I'm, I'm literally I'm TSA pre-check he goes yeah sorry man you gotta do it I was like seriously that's like you luckily, pay, didn't you pay for that like, yeah you oh pay my for it. yeah so it's yeah. so it's supposed to be like an easy process I've never had anyone like I was like taking out individual chargers. Like I had like, you know how you get those tubs? I had like six tubs full of stuff because it's just so much stuff that I like compactly fit in my case. <laughs> you ran into the new TSA hire. Yeah. Chill out, TSA. We know we know 9-11 wasn't real. So yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. And then I then when I, that. No, I'm yeah, just kidding. And then, you know? I'm just kidding. And then uh and then when I get over there, like I, I took all my stuff and got my cases and I left the tubs there and they're like, uh, sir, get your tubs. And I'm like, all right, whatever. People like stack them up and throw them. I was just, I was irritated, but yeah, a lot of them are, have been pretty cool. Um, sometimes it's it's a little bit of an extra process, so I go in early. But yeah, land Fridays or land, yeah, land on Thursday nights. Usually, most of the supercrosses are pretty close to the airports. Outdoors, it was about an hour. Usually, forty five minutes to an hour to most tracks. Yep. So you land, jump in the rental car, go check in the hotel, and then I uh, on Thursday nights I'll go through and I'll prep all my drones, I'll charge all the batteries and stuff. Show up Friday mornings for. Outdoors, it was usually wake up, uh, fly as soon as I could, get as many packs on the track as I could, try and learn all the tracks. Yeah, get familiarized yep. with all the turns you got to do. Yeah. Or not, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they were really cool. They gave me, uh, when my boss, Tim, he gave me a little uh, XR70. It was a Suns bike. And so I used to, I would ride it around the full tracks and like look for power uh, lines. Yeah, I'm smart. There were some outdoor tracks where it was like speaker wire, like 
I mean, just you can barely see yeah, it. Yeah, barely see it. Just all across, there was, and everybody's not coordinating. Like you won't even know it's there. It's, you yeah, know? it's there's no they they're not thinking like oh there's a drone flying over here we should remove this thousand lines like in in New York <laughs> yeah. I, I, I legitimately was like how is this legal <laughs> like in California I was like this is like a fire hazard and, I'm and like, you know all the like regulations oh, so. it was it was crazy and like no that's just how it is upstate New York yeah yeah and I was just like checks out oh, okay but I mean literally upstate New York like where the track is in Unadilla. It's all cornfields, like cornfields for literally an hour to the track. Like oh I was like, God. this is not what I thought in New York. It was one of my favorite tracks, honestly. Um, the, it was super difficult to fly, but the power lines and stuff, it wasn't even, it was speaker wires. So they just went and took like literally like speaker, like this kind of, this size of wire and just ran them across trees, stapled them to trees and then oh, just shit. put those little single speakers. Oh my. So you had speakers all over this entire track and they all branched from the main like tower. So the main tower, like the, fo- I, I don't know if I can show a photo of it. Maybe I can find one, but it's like there's literally a thousand. There has to be a thousand plus speaker wires <laughs> wow. running Crazy. everywhere. I was like, it was like had to have been done like since the '80s, and they just never stopped. They just kept like, oh, it failed. Put another one. Failed. Put another one. Yeah. Like, so I'd be like flying my first packs, and I was like, no cable, no cable. Oh, there it is. And then I was like, all right, change my line. And that was so that was a lot of learning because I'm used to my local tracks where there's none of that. No yeah, one runs yeah, yeah. anything over a track and. So do you try and, and walk the track or get around the track at least before you f- take your first flight? Or Yeah, exactly. So I, I jumped out there on that mini bike and I would do a lap around. I'd go out there to yep. take some photos. I was posting Instagram stories like, like my line. Like I was like, all right, here's a power line. So you get to actually r- ride a little mini bike on the track? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, That's so awesome. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. So before like. The, so you do get to ride the Supercross track. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, not, yeah. Not, just the outdoors. Supercross. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Supercross all walk. Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. like this weekend. And you might s- eat shit on the Supercross. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sometimes there's still wires on those supercross tracks, right? For the uh, for that whatever spider camera, or whatever. Yeah, they the call thing it. that goes like zip line. Uh, or so whatever. they so that was actually the beginning of the year. Yeah, the cable cam, like it. Yeah, they call it the zip cam, and it would go along down one side. And it was uh, some races. It was super close to track, and the way our insurance reads is you can't fly like for every one foot in height, I can't go one foot diagonally within a fan. Got it. So it's like where I can go is really limited. I got to stay inside, but. When there's cross traffic, it's like you can't just go to the other lane and have someone come head on at your drone. Yeah. So it was uh, a, a lot of learning in Supercross, mm-hmm. trying to figure out Compared where to go. Compared to outdoor, that's what I'm, yeah. yeah I'm like, way more technical. Supercross, I honestly, I don't care for flying it. Like, it's not, like, outdoors, I enjoy it. Supercross is like, all right, let's 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 get these shots and then yeah, let's go You're home. locked in. Yeah, yeah. like, it's, it's, it's very, you got to be very focused. In his last part, you are talking about how you learn little tricks throughout the way. I'm sorry, I just... Like oh, more, to fly? just little tricks throughout the years of flying. Yeah. So like, what kind of did you learn throughout this year? Like new tricks. Yeah. You know, so like with supercross and outdoors. Yeah. So I'm under an NDA with my own company that I okay. can't discuss those no things. Worries. Yeah. No, yeah, worries, no, yeah. no. I'm just kidding. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a shout out to one of my my good pals at a really big drone company. <laughs> no us. worries. No worries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he always uh, one of my one of my uh, best friends who uh, started filming. He does like NASCAR and a bunch of stuff. He works for a company. And he'll always be like, oh, I just this commercial. I'm like, oh, what is it for? Oh, I'm under an NDA. So it's always my joke back with him. Like when oh, I'm funny. doing something, I'm like, oh, sorry, bro. I'm under an NDA with Bud Skycam. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Single employee, you know? Yeah. So um, now there's like, uh, it was really about flying slower. Like it was, yeah. uh, Supercross is so start and stop. Where with motocross, it's like, and just like you Why know their they? momentum. Yeah, like yeah. you can kind yeah. of judge where they're going to be at. But Supercross you'll go through a corner and all of a sudden it's almost a dead stop yep. to like 40 miles an hour over a triple. Exactly. So, so really like getting that timing down and flying slower, um, and, and the speeds of which my drone, not like the actual like mile per hour, but they're called rates. And the rates that I'm flying at are like, a, like half or almost a third of how fast my outdoor. Rates that was going to be like my question. Like, yeah. <laughs> are you even using the same drone for motocross and supercross? You change in blades. So yeah. 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 So question. yeah. So actually I, I, I built a new drone for, from what I learned in outdoors, um, the, the geometry of the frame I was using was good for what I was using it for, but it could have been better. And so I found this, um, this engineer guy, he has like this uh, idea for vibrations or whatever. He's like a mechanical engineer, mm-hmm. aerospace. So he has his frames cut from this dude up in uh, up in Canada. So I was like, well, you seem like a smart guy. So I went with his frame that he uh, that he engineered. He had all this data and stuff. And I was like, well, I like data. 
So I used his frame and then I built off of what I've done before and I have a new, I call it a Skymoto. It's a, it's really just a combination of a few different things, but that's a sick name. Yeah. You know, I, like I, I figured why not? Right. Yeah, you know? That's sick. Yeah. So I can get behind that. Yep. Yeah, I took it to my 3d print guy and I was like, Hey Brent at BMC 3d. I was like, Hey, just pick whatever color, man, whatever this looks good. Just come up with this. I need this guarded. I need this for my GPS, which was a new thing this year as well. I needed some kind of like return to home, some kind of safety thing. Oh, so, yeah, because last pod you said that when you have an issue, like, you could just go up. But in Supercross, yeah. I, I was I actually watched the pod. Yeah. So those of you who have, wa- have not watched pod two, go watch that pod because he's not just the Supercross, motocross, drone flyer. He builds them. He used to race them. So that's how he got into this. So if you guys want to know more about, like, history, that pod two is going to be a good pod for you to watch as well. We'll tag so, it and put it yeah. in the uh, description of the video, too. So it's down there. Go check it out. So, yeah, you can't go up anymore. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. that was that was uh, right before I basically it was like a good two month uh, learning process because the software just wasn't there for that kind of stuff. And yeah. it, it, it just like December, it started getting there. And so I, I tried a bunch of stuff and finally got it working where I can be like, you know, turn my remote off and it'll just fly and, and come back and land to me, which wasn't a thing with my style of drone yeah. before. So I took it to my 3D print guy. I said, here's all the stuff. This is what I want. And he's like, he came back with yellow. And I was like. All right. I wasn't like at first, like, I don't know if I like <laughs> yellow, yellow, like a super bright yellow, <laughs> yeah. but now Probably it's easier like, to see though. Right? And now yeah, it stands yeah. out and a lot of people and that video. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I, I took it. I was like, I asked a bunch of people, I was like, do I leave it yellow? And I was like, yeah, it looks good. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm leaving it yellow. So it's been what I've been running with. I've got a new motor package that I just ordered um, from another shop up in Canada and stuff that I'm supposed to be getting soon. So I'm going to change a little bit for outdoors, but just trying to each, each season make something better, improve yep. something and, yep. you know, Try and make it smoother, whatever I can do. You should have so. come out with one of your own drones to sell. You know, I mean, because I mean, now that you're on Peacock, I mean, eventually people are gonna. I mean, I can, I hear him sometimes mentioning your name. So yeah. So eventually, I mean, it's only a matter of time before everybody knows who you are. Yeah, you it's know? it's been surprising. I got some guy, like I got a guy dude out in Australia who hits me up all the time. A guy from the UK who was like, "Man, we're trying to get drones in, in Supercross over here," and he said they they've been nice like crazy. How are you getting in? I was like, "Ah, oh, I got a really good boss named Tim who he's just making it happen." And, it's like relationships he's built from being in Supercross, and he's like, "Hey, this is what we have," and it, it's been pretty amazing because I was only supposed to do six, uh, five or six Supercrosses this year, and we did eleven. After next weekend, it'll be wow. eleven. Wow! So, so you must have done. You must have done a really good job. I mean, yeah, something like I, that. I mean, you came back yeah. the extra times, and they said so. If you come back extra, you must be doing a badass job. Yeah, the state, the so. stadiums. A lot of them were, you know, no, this is no drone, automatic, no policy, and. We would, some of them were like, hey, just send us what you have. What do you have? And our insurance was way above what they were requesting, like our like our safety procedures, our protocol, everything, the manual and stuff that, that I put together, um, along with Tim for what they're looking for. And it's been like the Cardinals. The, the Cardinals handed us like a 15-page thing, and we're like, hey, cover everything in here. And I just took that, and I basically made a manual from the what the Cardinals ask, and they're like, all right, you're approved. And then we get there, and they're like, hey, we're going to open the roof for you. Um, 65 feet. Go ahead and dive through it. <laughs> That's a sick shot. Yeah. So they made, me, they made me dive through it like 30, 40 times. And back to the TV truck, they're like, look how cool this is. Wow. So and sick. I'm sitting there just going, oh, my God. This yeah. Is, I was like, for guys, you, it's nerve cool. <laughs> scary for me. Was, <laughs> my heart, like, I've never, I've never had my heart racing so much. And they're like, and I can just hear him back, the producer and director, are just talking about, look at this shot. It's amazing. And I was like, if you guys don't need this anymore, I'm going to take yeah, a break. Yeah. And they're like, no, yeah. you're good. And then I come back from a break outside, and they got the roof open up the whole way. And I'm like, you guys, why couldn't we have been doing this with the roof open the whole whole way? Like, why, why are <laughs> yeah. we doing this? And I found out later, I was like, it's got to be like 50 feet. And someone's like, yeah, 65 feet is what it was. And I was like, that's crazy. That's so, so it was an opening shot for the, if you can pull it up. I think it's on like Peacock or something. We'll pull it up. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. Find it. We'll, And we watch this back as we edit, so. Yeah, it's a, it's basically the opening shot for the show in Arizona. And they had me sitting Arizona. on top of the roof. And they were basically like, all right, Chris, go. And they just cut to me. And I basically just cut motors and I dive straight down all the way to the track. And then they cut to, to Ricky. And it's a. And yeah. what's the difference? Be, I know, remember last pod, you said uh, that you can't like fly over people. Correct. Because and he knows all the regulations. So yep. like, he can So how does that differ, like in Supercross, because it's a stadium? So the same, same, same rules, thing? same thing. But yeah. the difference was is the way the stadium works is, basically they have like the roof that opens up is only a strip in the middle, and it's actually, 
I don't know if it's the exact same width or it's a little bit narrow, more narrow than the actual football stadium. Mm. So like where it opens up, there's actually no fans. Okay. okay so okay. both Makes sides, sense. the fans are actually like way beyond where yep. it opens up. So it, it was like just like a perfect scenario where okay. the roof protects all the fans. Where you dive in, the fans are, man, 200 plus feet back. And I think they said the roof was like 180 feet or something. So, so it's like the dimensions and stuff when they were talking about it. I like was online like, all right, how tall is the roof? Okay, how far are the fans back? Where are they going to be at? And so like I got with Tim and we figured out how far the fan seating is actually going to be because Supercross – they sit way further back than where they do for like football. Even yeah. they always have like the first fifteen. Yeah, yeah. To, sometimes advertising even, or yeah, safety, whatever. Exactly. Sometimes they'll even have like the first fifty to seventy-five rows covered, and it was kind of like that with them, just the way the track was. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd be sick was, if you could do NFL or something like too. Like that'd be crazy. So that's my buddy, uh, the one who I said does the yep. NDA stuff. Yep. That's what their company does, but uh, the NFL doesn't allow them inside the stadium, yeah, so yeah. everything's all outside. Yep. But they started doing the, is it UFL, UCL? I would just be so sick to see somebody get tackled just like right above them. Like. Lingerie football league? Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, they, I actually just saw that, that they brought that back. the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind uh, what Jesse said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they actually probably let those on because, yeah, the UFL or UCFL, like the, the, like the lower version, the Rocks one, mm-hmm. he actually, my buddy was actually able to fly on the field, was a, chasing a football into the end zone. So it's they're they're definitely it's it's getting there. I mean, there's yeah. it's just the beginning of drone stuff. It really absolutely. Is. So, I mean, the tech's only going to get better, right? So big time. Yeah. yeah, the worst it will ever be is right now. You know. Yeah, my video system that I'm actually running right now is is going to be replaced probably within the next six months. The the new equipment's starting to come out, and so now it's just a migration to the new stuff. Yep. So. Yep. We know how that goes. I just want to say, uh, so I just think it's crazy. Um, I mean, like just thinking about it, like Dave, uh, Dave Cook is the one who like kind of like, hey, you should come out to the track. I remember I listened to the last pod. Yeah. Just thinking about that moment. And yeah. It was like thinking about where you are now. Like, how do you feel? It's crazy. So I actually got to take Dave and my dad to uh, San Francisco. Unfortunately, it rained the entire time. That was such a nasty yeah. night. Yeah, so we literally sat in our pop-up. Like, I waterproofed my drone. I was like, hey, I can fly up to a certain amount of rain. But it was like, it was just like downpouring. Like, it yeah, wasn't even yeah, yeah. close to like a semi-sprinkle. So Yeah, it was nuking rain that night. Yeah, so Dave and my dad, uh, I got to take both of them. They were my spotters and stuff for That's the so weekend. Sad. So I got to pay them and stuff. I took care of them, got the hotel. Yeah. So they got like the full treatment of being like a factory mechanic. So they were super pumped. They were like down behind where like uh, all the riders come in to go to the tracks. So they were like watching them because obviously I couldn't fly. So they were just like, oh, this is amazing. They, like walked out on the track, got behind the starting gate. So yeah, it's crazy to think like, you know, back in 2000, was it 18, 19 or something like going out and chasing buddies and, you know, like just doing it for fun to now 2024, like to be knowing that I have this contract, not knowing, but, but I've, I, I feel like this contract for the next four years is is pretty well set. So yeah, I know we're already, we're already talking about next year's contracts and stuff like that. So um, wow, that's yeah, it's so a, awesome, bro. Yeah. So this was this year I was supposed to do. Um, it was just supposed to be six super cro- five to six super crosses if we could get them approved, and then it was the eleven outdoors and then the three at, uh, championships. But yeah, I'll end up being twenty five because I'll do eleven super crosses, then all the outdoors and the three championships. So it's crazy. That's man. an accomplishment. It's crazy. Thanks, man. I appreciate super, it. Super dude. proud of yeah, you, bro. Dude. Thanks, Seriously. Man. Yeah, I appreciate it's, it. It's always nice to see just like a local homie that I've grew up with, racing with. Um, just see him come up. Like I said, the last pod, like we both kind of ended up at the track at the same time. Yeah. You know, doing vendors. He, like I said, he's doing the drones. I'm doing the CBD. So it's it's nice to see just local people come out. Uh, and make it in this industry, especially how far he's making it in the little time that he's been in it. Crazy. Um, so, like, what, few years ago you started kind of doing it at the track. You yeah, know? exactly. So from three years to literally living the dream, you know what I mean? Um, he may not have got to race Supercross, but he is basically racing Supercross because he's flying above Jet. He's flying above Tomac. He's, he's flying the above <laughs> yeah, no all arm the best pump. guys. No yeah. arm pump, man. Yeah, oh, right. I'm not going to be in shape. I so mean, I could argue you, yeah, have you don't have the arm best pump. view. You have the best <laughs> view in the house, That's, you know? So. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I agree. The stuff so, I get to see, some of the battles I see that, that like, I, hopefully they usually make the TV and stuff, but some of the stuff, it's like, man, like, it's crazy. Like, I'm here, like, 
Yeah, Whoa. I mean, I know you're probably really focused on flying at the same time, but I know you're still looking at it. Too, oh, 100%. So. Like, I'm at, that's awesome because at this point, basically, Daniel they tell him to just stay on the leader and they have me as the battle cam. So they're saying, like, hey, go find the battle wherever yeah. it's at. Yeah, unless it's the battle for first and second, Daniel will take it. Like, I'll take all the way up to the battle for third or battle for second if it's between second or third. And yeah, I'm just looking at who's going forward. And how does that work? Like, explain that a little bit. So, yeah. So, as a rider, you know, like, when someone's going forward. Like, you, yep. can, you can just see in their body movements. And so, as a rider, like, I'm just seeing them. Like, okay, this person's going forward. As soon as I see someone going forward, I'll try and latch onto them. Okay. And I'll, I'll tell the producer, director, hey, you know, Sexton's moving forward right now. Or Tomac's moving forward. And I'll let him know, like, hey, we're in this area. And so, sometimes... So, they, you're kind of letting him know, like, hey, this is where I'm at. And then like, and then you tell me kind of where you want, what you want me to do. I mean, they're, or they're just, the you only, go here and you yeah, got to find them or how does that work? Like, no, they, it sounds like he's finding yeah, the battles. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. They, okay, okay. Unless, I'm unless, making sense of it. Yeah, yeah, so unless they have like someone like a specific, sometimes I'll ask the producer like, hey, do you want me to, is there someone specific you want me to get? Yeah. Usually like race day live, like in the morning and stuff, it's more of those that want like a specific lap or something from somebody. So they'll tell me like, hey, go find 21 or go find one or whatever for a lap. But during the actual races, yeah, it's pretty much just like, hey, this is the battle. They're they're so focused. Like the director's talking to, I don't know, fifteen camera guys, and then the producer's talking to the director, all the camera, all like every little graphic you see on there. There's somebody yeah. sitting in this truck of thirty five plus people that they're waiting for their call to press their button to, like, yeah. I, there's even the knob. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Like the knobs of roll it in. Yeah, like yeah, all yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like it's like. It, it's mind blowing. So, wow. um, or like the person who controls my video, like the shader, they're like, Hey, Andy, I need, I need dark. You're a little hotter, whatever they, they're saying. Like, so you're just, learning a lot about uh, broadcasting so and much. all the lingo and it, stuff. I, yeah, I still don't understand, but like, yeah, I, I've learned enough to where I can get, yeah, yeah, but it's crazy. So, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm basically like, I'm finding the shots unless they tell me go find someone and then I'm calling it out, like, Hey, this is what I see. And yeah. they're, they're now realizing, like, okay, Chris understands the races and they're just kind of, I would say letting me do whatever I want, but in a way, I feel like they've given me a lot of freedom. Yeah, and so, well, it's good know? that you are, like I said, he, like I said, watch Pod Two. But Chris was pro at motocross. He grew up racing, racing drones, and then he incorporated it all together. So he does know a lot about motocross. You know what I mean, and how to obviously find people and like what to look for. Yeah. Um, and uh, I noticed on the last last week, you po a couple weeks ago, you posted a story kind of showing, and I, I'll put that up here, uh, your new controller. So he has the flight control, he's got his goggles on, you got your earphones on. Yeah. And then, so uh, I think Peacock was it? They made you some new broadcasting oh, yeah. controls. So, so. so I actually, uh, they made that, and then I went and changed it, and I uh, did some other stuff. But upgraded yeah, they, it. Yeah, yeah, upgraded, yeah. But they, uh, in order to be able to talk and stuff to the director, like, Normally, like a camera guy has like buttons on his thing. Like mm -hmm. even the other drone pilot, he's got a remote. His eyes are under, so they have these boxes where you got to press a button. So when I'm under the goggles, I can't take my hand off the remote. I can't press a button. So for the for basically all the way until outdoors until recently, I've had a foot pedal. Yep. I'll just be mm -hmm. on the director producer's channel and I'll just I'll I'll step on it and I'll talk. But that recently broke a few. Actually, the round my dad was at. Uh, so for Nashville, I was literally like hitting my dad and kicking my dad like call him yeah yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. producer him. yeah <laughs> yeah like, Yo, producer and he'd like and he'd hit me back and then i'd say something to the producer and then i'd nudge him and he'd turn it off so there's a few times i told the director and producer like i'm sorry guys so i'm gonna yell in your ear but like turn it off i'm just, like yeah. sitting right behind the starting yeah, line yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's so loud and it's there. live People yeah and i got yeah. i got these these are sound deadening but the ones i have are even more sound deadening because i got to hear everything that's going on as well so it's yeah, it was a it's a trip. So yeah, they've they've been taking care of me. There's a lot of stuff I've learned. Video, just the processing. My video quality hasn't been. It's better today than it was before, but it's going to keep getting better. Just you know, and it's process. good. It's good that you and Chris knows how to like talk to people while flying drones. Uh, because there's people crowding around the booth, stuff like that. But also, you've raced drones, so you're sitting, like you said on the last part, you're sitting there just talking crap like you're on Xbox, like yeah. you know, on Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So for Chris, it's like second nature. So if you're wondering like how he's sitting there, like how are you talking to these people? He has the thing on. It's like a video game. So it's kind of like you're playing a video game, and then you got your controls here. You're like, hey, I gotta talk to Ricky, or I gotta talk to this guy, and you just click a little button. So we'll throw that controller. I did take a screenshot of the little yeah. recording of that, so yeah. we'll throw that up there to show. 
kind of how he's doing what he's doing um because it's it's i'm sure it's stressful but you know he's getting used to it i'm sure yeah no so. it's, it's a learning process for sure yeah I'm that reminds too. me of that uh you say xbox live that reminds me of that uh meme video that we saw like when uh in 20 years when all the bikes are fully electric and i did you see uh, that yeah, video and all the dudes me. yelling back and forth at each other on the whole shot so funny I'll, i'm gonna put that up yeah no, 100%. Video. that's and it's funny because live broadcast is so stressful like when i first started like the producer and yell uh producer and director would be like yelling at each other and i was like man they hate <laughs> each other and so i was thinking someone was getting fired and then i found out no they're like brothers that's yeah. and that's and that's why they talk like that i was like oh okay yeah. and then so once i realized like they're like brothers and they've been brought they've been doing it together for so long like the director he used to direct arena cross back in pj one days that's directing it now yeah, yeah. so these guys have been in the sport for a long time like they know the ins and outs and everything they know the relationships between people like all that kind of stuff. So it's cool to listen to them in the background and, you know, hear Carmichael stuff in yeah. the background and him and James Stewart will, will banter back and forth and talk about stuff off air. And it's, it's really cool. Do you to hear any to. good banter between them? Yeah. Oh. It, it's <laughs> honestly, any it's, it's you signed an NDA. <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm just yeah. kidding. No, I'm, honestly, the one thing I will say, I don't think I'll get in trouble for it, but is I remember what round it was outdoor, but it was like rehearsal and, it was like it was Carmichael was saying something or no Stewart was saying something and it was Carmichael just like picking up like saying positive stuff to to Stewart yeah and it was just like dang these guys are like they got like it was like a, they were on a team and they were helping each other out with That's stuff so and they awesome. were just, like they'll every once in a while like take little jabs about yeah. racing back in the day but for the most part those guys like they're talking each other up and I was like dang this is cool to see like it's something I never thought you know I'd hear Carmichael like you're doing great on that, Ricky. Are you doing great yeah. on that, James? Or James yeah. saying the same thing to Ricky? Like, I was like, dang, this is Well, cool. it's just like any sport. Like, when you know how good somebody is, like, you respect that person. Like, mm -hmm. just like UFC, they talk about it. Joe Rogan talks about it. Uh, even after a fight, the guy knocks him out. You know, the guy's still like, hey, most of the time, unless, you know, it was some weird beef, most of the time they respect that fighter. You know, like, just from stepping into that ring together or, like, a, a motocross tracks the ring to them yeah so they've stepped into that ring together multiple years in a row and uh they've won they've lost you know what i mean they respect each other so yeah. you see that camaraderie you know like out there with them yeah for anybody and also speaking of the brothers you just said a second ago the topic uh how did you feel i know you weren't at denver uh, but were you a little bit bummed that you didn't get to catch that on on film? Yeah, that's cool. It's actually I'll tell you a funny little story. I was actually at an airport and Jet's dad uh, was getting on the bus and Jet's dad was asking some things. He saw my I have all from doing all the outdoors. I got an outdoor sticker for all the nationals, so I have them on my case and stuff. Mm -hmm. and he was asking me, he's like, "Oh, what do you do?" And I told him the drone. He's like, "Oh, your drone looks like shit, <laughs> but it goes <laughs> it goes like hell though." And I was like. <laughs> What, like, did he mean the quality of the video? Yeah, looks no, like no, no, no. Like it looked like he goes, it looks like it's homemade. And I was oh, like, God. yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it, you almost sound like Dean Wilson right there, dude. It was <laughs> his, his <laughs> accent, dude. I was like, I was like, he's, I don't, I don't mean to be no disrespect. And I was like, no, it is homemade. Like I, like I built it. Like I've built guards. Like all this stuff is specifically for Moto. He goes, it's amazing. And he talked it up. Like he loved it, but he was just like. It was just a funny comment because it does like I got two big old antennas hanging off the back. I, yeah. I got that. a big old <laughs> antenna at the bottom, like, yeah. It, and I do that because it all of those things like could I put smaller antennas on there? Yeah, probably. But would I possibly lose reception at a certain point in time? Maybe. But it's so, about, lo about looking good. That's right exactly. Now. I mean, it. it's not like you're just flying like, or we're not just going to the park and yeah, flying. This is like it's not a walk in the park. It's a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean? yeah, it's far you're from trying to impress yeah. with the footage, yeah. not with the drone. Say no, pic no. say no picnic, bitch. Yeah, right? I don't. I don't <laughs> want to fall out of the sky. I'm running. I'm in really long antennas, like yeah, longer absolutely. than I've ever run. Like, but I'm just doing all those things. Like I'm running. I'm running more antennas right now than I ever have, and it's because at the races there's so much RF. There's so many oh, yeah. different frequencies. Like I learned at Washougal, like. Just the timing system. They were really close to me, and we had issues with theirs. So, like, I could only fly part of the track. And, hmm. and like, one of the super motocrosses, we ran into another issue with those leader lights stepping on my channel. So, it was wow. just wow. learning experience, like, finding those things and, like, talking with those different departments to be like, hey, here's my channel. Where's your channel? Okay, let's make sure we're not having issues. So, um, yeah, my drone, honestly, I don't think it looks the best. I think yellow looks cool, but... Yeah, the antenna is, it looks like an alien little bug out there, but you know, <laughs> no, yeah, honestly, yeah. It, it does a job and I'm happy with it. So it flies better than my previous drones did, the handling of it and stuff. So, um, and I actually spent yesterday and the day before, I spent, I don't know, two, three hours just tuning the drone, trying to dial it in a little bit smoother. So, uh, okay. but, um, but we, uh, we still have moto trivia. All right, I'll keep it short. Yeah, I'll keep so, my answer shorter. I'm a long so, way to talk. No sometimes. worries. It's all good. We appreciate it. We, we love having you here. So, 
Uh, I, I love picking your brain. Because awesome. so. I came up with questions today just kind of like on my own, you know, but like I'll be talking to you and you'll say something and then I'll be like, oh, don't forget this question. Like, yeah. I want to I ask this, yep. you know? So that's why sometimes like I'll blank out on something because yeah. I'm trying to listen to you. For but sure. I'm also trying to like not forget that question, yeah. you know? Yeah. 100%. Um, okay, so the one question, another question that I had was just like growing up in the sport, racing motocross, watching all these pros and famous people like what is your who have you met and you know now that you've been doing this for a year and maybe like your top three like just the most pumped that you are about meeting somebody you know yeah no when i first started yeah i mean growing up like a little bit closer closer yeah yeah like growing up like every like i mean i was uh i was a huge pastrana mcgrath um i wasn't i wasn't a uh Stewart fan at first and I wasn't a Carmichael fan I was more of a Wyndham fan but like as their careers went on like I became like a bigger fan and then like after they left I was like dang that was pretty cool to like be in that era and that's kind of how I feel a little bit about Jet right now too like I'm like uh, I don't don't win everything yeah but at that's the same how time, I felt last summer yeah, man. yeah at the same time I'm like you know like it's cool to be like I, I filmed the perfect season like yeah that like, he may never do that again and I was there for that so like Carmichael like like to even like talk to that dude, like I was like, dang, Carmichael's here, dang, Stewart's here, and then every Friday there was these uh, tech call or not tech calls, but these uh, production meetings, and I'd go sit down in them, and I'd literally be sitting at a table with Carmichael Stewart, and then like through the season they'd be asking me drone questions and stuff, and God. they'd be all they'd be excited about stuff, and I was like, this is crazy, like this is really cool, and one time uh, we were leaving, I think it was like Mount Morris where I got to do the shot with Carmichael, and the producer's like, hey, we're we're sending Carmichael up to you guys, we're gonna do a little shot on you guys, and I was like. What do you mean do a shot? And I was like, oh, we're going to have Carmichael up where you guys are sitting. And I was like, that's crazy. Okay. Oh, yeah. And, I, yeah, and bit, I was right? like, I was like, I don't really understand that the drone pilots like, nah, they're not coming up to us. Why are they going to come up to us? We're the drone yeah, pilots. And yeah. I was like, I think they are, dude. I think they're coming up to us. And so then like, yeah, we're sending Carmichael up to you guys. And so we rehearsed and they had me fly all the way up Mount Morris and stuff for the broadcast. And like, so yeah, sick. Carmichael rehearsed it and we did it and stuff. And the Friday before Carmichael was leaving with his family and he like rolled down, he stopped, like he like stopped rolling. and was like, hey, I'm excited about that bit tomorrow. And I was like, yeah, 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 man. Oh, like, yeah. like trying like be cool because they're just like part of you know they're just part yeah. of the team. You we're don't want to fan over them too much. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and so as time went on, it was like okay, they're just they're just regular guys like we are. Yeah, and they're just like it, they're excited about the sport. They're excited to see the stuff. So it's so like Carmichael, Stewart, like those guys. Like all whenever I see him, I'll talk to him. Like towards the end of Super Motocross, I was like asking Stewart, like, hey, they were doing the track previews. Like, what line do you want me to do to the rhythm? Like, what what's doable and stuff, and just like joke with them and. He's like, oh, just make something big for me. And but they would uh, call it the line. So it'd be like, all right, we're rehearsing. Chris, do this line, and then Carmichael or Stewart in rehearsals would like talk over the line. So I'd either speed up or slow down based on what they said. So that was cool. Um, actually, yeah, got, and you're like listening like a, like a, like a video game. So yeah, it's like, oh, right, slow down. All right. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, hey, Chris, do it again. Yeah. Go back and do this line here. Like, hey, can we triple in here or can we do that? Like. I was like, yeah, I can. I'll triple in. Like, yep. it's a drone. We yeah. can do that all day. Yeah, like, yeah. You want us to do five in? Let's go five in. You yeah, know, it's like, just like Fortnite. Like, build a box. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so what? It, what is when he says triple in? What does he mean? Like, like go like, over, in, the, like in a rhythm. Like yeah. So like actually follow. It looks the, like you're tripling in. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Dude. Yeah. Not actually tripling in, yeah, but I make it look it. like yeah. you're tripling in. Exactly. You know? yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, I think it was. Was it Unadilla last year? Where. They had me do a track preview, like down the the screw you, where it's like straight down and straight mm-hmm. up, and they were like, "Wow!" And I think that that time, like, okay, we're gonna start using you for track previews. Can you fly the whole track? And then so when we got to Super Motocross, and I was just like my practice laps with no riders, I was just out there doing the track, doing laps and stuff. And yeah, I think it was the very first one, I think it was it Charlotte? No, it was um, not Charlotte, but the other one, I forget the name. Um, whichever the first one was, the drag strips. Maybe it was Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte really and Chicago. Yeah, Charlotte North was Carolina. the first one. Yeah. Have, as Andrew Floyd would say, I have no depth in motorcars. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. no sure. it's like our our joke. Oh, is it? <laughs> if I don't if I don't know something, like when I first saw Austin Stroop in the mall, oh, we, he's like, Do you, he's like Cameron, <laughs> Cameron, and I'm like, what? And he's like, it's you don't know who that is, and I'm like. Uh no, but then once he said it, I knew. But I'm not like that. I just can't remember everything like yeah. that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so that was, and that's how last year was. Like going to all the races. Like, where are you going this weekend? I was like, ah, wherever the airplane yeah, says. Yeah. Like, I'm like, you don't <laughs> yeah. know. I'm like, yeah. I just landed from somewhere I've never been. I'm gonna go somewhere I've never been again. I'm just, you know, yeah, that's like our day. I bet that's know. so cool, bro. Like, uh, just going. 
I hate to traveling. take off to a new new city and go travel the country. So like, stressful. I hate I'm traveling. I hate airports. Me too. I hate. Well, like, I'm stoked for you. Yeah, I thank know you. you hate you it. Know but I'm but it's, airplane, I've learned. So. I've learned, yeah. man. Like I <laughs> yeah. was like last year. Like I was like, how do I even find the terminals? Like, what am yeah. I doing? I was like, ask my cousin. I bet you're a pro now. <laughs> now I'm like, yeah, I've yeah. got my United Club card pass. There I'm like go. going to the club. Like I'm Sweet. like, okay, this is. I'll take longer layovers so I can go sit down. Which I met some guy, a uh, dude at Pro Circuit, who started. Uh, who took over the suspension like right at Thunder Hill, right as the pro circuit started going up. And so me and him kept running into each other and he was taking me in the club card or in the club with him and he was doing master pool suspension and then uh, no shit. Right when he was doing really good. Uh, shout out to master pool. Yeah, yeah, so then pro circuit hired him on and I was like, so we were always talking stories. Like I just started and he was Tomac's old suspension guy. Now like look at pro circuit, they're doing awesome. So I always go over and say what's up to him. But he was the one who was like, yeah, do this on your flights, do this. So I was like, just anyone that had done the national supercross like what can i do how can yeah. i make this easier yeah. give me yeah. give me all the information you got no so, for sure right. i mean any information is good information because even like i said even in my field like any field like you don't know everything you know it's like you're always going to learn something new like every day i learn something new you know like no matter even in dirt bikes motocross i've been riding since i was four years old and every day i still learn something new yeah you know, I, about myself or about the bike yep i know, know very little about what i know but i know the little bit Pretty well. So that's, that's, that's what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, exactly. I'm sticking bro. to what I know and asking everybody else everything else. Yeah. Let's, uh, we, so we got some question, a couple questions. Uh, I threw up a little post on IG. Like, anybody have any questions uh, that maybe I didn't think of? Um, so we did get some questions here. Let's any see chat here. GPT ones? They got any good ones? Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Where is it out here? Talk about changing the world, ChatGPT. Yeah, so we it's got, crazy. Uh, so the first question is from Bud Skycam. Any good questions? Yeah, you know, that's, that's how I thought it would go. <laughs> Our number one fan. That's the only question we got, so sorry. No. Made sense. Um, all right, so we got uh, questions from C Thinger 156 That's uh, Steve Thinger's nephew. Uh, here we go. Here. Besides being employed by Supercross for filming, do you also make a living on Instagram? Not I make uh, not a penny on Instagram. Yeah, okay. yeah. that's what I figured. <laughs> yeah, so I, I Instagram. I, it's hard to make money on yeah. that. Yeah, there was one time like a year and a half ago, I got the Instagram bonus, and it was like once you make fifty bucks, we'll see if you can do it again. And they paid me fifty bucks once I hit like I think it was like twenty five thousand views on a video, or I had to be like in a couple of videos, and then I got that, and then never again. So yeah, nothing. Yeah. I heard I heard TikTok's way better. I've been meaning to get on there. Everyone keeps telling me like, hey, put all your stuff on there. For all the supercross and motocross stuff, I don't own, own any of that. So it's like, but I've got so much amateur stuff. I've got so many great amateur stuff. I miss all the like, local guys at the races and stuff. Like you should I'm, start posting multiple videos. That's yeah. what they say, like on the algorithm. Like that's what sometimes if I don't post for like a week and then I yeah. post a video, I'll get like barely any views. But yeah. if I'm sitting there like when I was posting five videos a day, that's when I was getting more views. And like I'm just I got burnt out YouTube. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, you gotta you gotta stay on top of it. They gotta <laughs> use that uh there's like that software that does it for you. I know I need to do it. Oh, there is? Yeah. <laughs> I learned. I, what did I say? Should I say I the name? Should I say the name? Do you know the name? Shout them out. Yeah. Uh, Opius. You know, maybe they'll give me a free, uh, free, free huh. software. Yeah, Opius. Yeah, hopefully, so this just takes off. You, you put the video in. You put your whole podcast in there, and then it'll cut it up into in little reels, and then it'll post it. It oh, does it all, cool. all using AI based on like what you said and the words you used and whatnot. That's crazy. And then it'll cut like each so person. Many crazy things. Yeah, if you have the audio done like you guys do, you can. It'll even take out like clips from different mics what? to do this. It's crazy. Yeah, it's we how most check, big companies. We gotta check it out then. It's like thirty bucks. A and month. for anybody, I know you didn't think. ask this question, but anybody wondering if we make money off Instagram and YouTube? Hell yeah, you do. Rats. Millions. Millions. Rats. <laughs> yeah. They actually, they actually paid me uh, ten grand to come do this pod. Yeah, yeah. I signed in India. I can't actually say the amount though. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Not, not, hey, sorry. Sorry, sorry, guys. I'm totally gonna steal that line though. That's funny. yeah. That's a funny one. Yeah. I literally believed him too. If you notice, yeah. I was like, no worries. I didn't want to like yeah. offend anybody. No worries. Yeah. Can't, can't tell you about my batteries or my motors or my props. That's a uh, that's a yeah. uh, top secret though. <laughs> I, got, I call them sky juices. I had them. Uh, I had them relabeled straight from China. <laughs> that's yeah. If you look at my packs, if anyone takes a screenshot, it says sky juice on them. Don't but sky cam, sky juice. You don't know? mess with them. Makes sense. Trademarked. You got sky moto. Yeah. You know the drone. Yep. Yep. Uh, he asked a couple questions here. Uh, so we kind of got into this. You can maybe brush over it lightly. Just how did you get started as a pilot? Yeah. Um, I mean, back in 2014 ish, 15, there was a, it was literally, a, I used to race RC cars. Like mm -hmm. after motocross, I needed something to race. Like I just, 
you know how it is as a yeah. racer. You need to race something. So I was racing RC cars and it's something you don't get injured from. Yeah, exactly. And like <laughs> there was like back in 2014, there was like this YouTube video going around of these guys like flying through these trees, and I was like, dang, that's crazy. And uh, I'll send you the clip. You got to post it. It's it's super old, but these guys just flying through okay. these trees. And I was like, you know what? If I could find one of those for cheap, I'm gonna buy one. And some guy had it on Craigslist for way too much. And I was like, ah, oh, put up like half. And he's like, all right, come do it. And I was like. Uh oh, this is why are you taking it for half? <laughs> so I went and picked it up and uh, I just started there. And then, literally, like six months later, their first ever drone national, like in the world, happened to be at Cal Expo. So I went and saw that and then I kind of got hooked. And then I just started, I started running drone races myself and hosting them because I would race motocross. I was like, ah, I yeah. do it my way. So, and then, you know, got into motocross. My buddy started riding again. So that's been what four years ago now yeah. at least almost five years and boom, ago you're at the track and yeah and he goes way in more depth on pod too so if you guys do want to know more like he talks all about we kind of go into the business aspect of yeah. it on that pod yeah. so pricing and all that i'm yeah. sure the prices might have been a got you a know, little more I, expensive I, now but i told all my uh all my buds i had these uh i did like a, a frequent flyer discount for my riders and i always kept the prices so like i raised them a little bit last year mm -hmm. I'll probably raise them again you because I've heard some drone pilots who um, are charging nearly like three and four times the yeah. amount that I am. Wow. And a lot of them, yeah. they, their drones can fly for like four or five minutes and my drone's flying for 20 minutes. So where they can get maybe, you know, a handful of corners, I'm getting full races and yeah. it's like, how are you charging more than me? So, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's and a different got, thing. He's got batteries everywhere charging. Yeah. He's got wires. You know what I mean? It's it's a lot of work and yeah. people don't realize that. Yeah. I mean, I know some, a lot of people do, but I'm saying a lot of consumers, you know, that maybe don't have businesses. And then just the that, editing you know? and dealing with the video files. I mean, there's... I've actually been working with some, uh, some editors recently on my oh, last nice. couple of stuff because nice. when I travel, like if I, if I'm like, I was going to do a local race, but the rain canceled everything this past weekend. I have a couple of editors that I was going to, um, send my stuff to. Cause like, Hey, if you guys want raw stuff, here it is. If you want an edit, I just don't have time. Cause I, yeah. I leave on Thursdays and it, yeah. If you have, like, I, sometimes I do 15 to 25 riders in a weekend. It's a lot of edits. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of edits. edits. And they're each each video is 10 minutes of raw footage I have to scrub per rider. Yeah, so I'm, like, finding those little spots, cutting it out. So, hours yeah. of work. Yeah, exactly. I'd spend anywhere between two to five hours on it, on anywhere from a 30-second to a minute edit. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. a lot of work. Yeah, that yeah. Goes. Like I said, yeah, editing is no joke. Like, even the podcast takes time, you know, especially if you want it to be good. Yeah, this was know? this was recorded in, what, January? Now it's going to come out, what, in May? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. so actually, I forgot to tell you just a quick thing. So last night I got an email at, like, 11 saying we got another strike on the channel. Ooh, right what? saying uh -oh. we can't post for another week hold on uh oh right and hey, uh and it was yeah. for the remember the video i was on the last part we talked about it it was the video that i said didn't get flagged with vivian on the front of the yeah. willing with yeah. my daughter and they my son's you. riding behind us oh yep so she has that. a full face on though yep you know i'm willing with her on the grom yep um so they flagged it i actually appealed it again and i said all stunts performed are done by trained professionals. Mm. And then I said uh, she was also wearing a full face helmet and they always are wearing protective yeah. gear. Yeah. And they actually, I won, I won nice. the appeal, baby. Yeah. Thank you, nice. you too. I appreciate yeah. you. Uh, hey, hey, you know what? Uh, what's his name's suck. kids do the Stasic backflips all the time. Um, what's his name? He did the, he, no, he rode the dirt bike on water. What's his name? I'm blanking on his uh, name. Uh, Rob Madison. Robbie Madison. Yeah, so his Madison. son, his son. Ooh, I got it. Yeah, Robbie I got Madison. Depth. There you go. I got there you go. Depth, you got depth. There we so go. <laughs> Robbie Madison's kids are like factory Stasic and they go around at Supercrosses and they do like a, a halftime, not a halftime show, but like a show with the freestyle guys and they backflip Stasics. They're, so sick. Yeah, it's like so nice. like. You so they're like, allowed to kids. upload their their videos because they have yeah. clout, and because we don't have clout, we get yeah. flagged. I don't you know. Get it, they got to got to prove it. You know, those other yeah. other little kids doing backflips. You know, yeah. got helmets on, doing it safe. Yeah. Yeah. Professionals. I try. That's what I'm saying. Is like, I, it's not like my kid didn't even the one they flagged that they actually rejected the one with yeah. my son. But I think it's because. He, uh, the helmet was kind of hard to see. Yeah. And it was like, you could really pro, only man. see his face, you know? You raised a pro class. You're pro. You know, they should. Yeah. I mean, like, I definitely, <laughs> that's all that matters. I'm not like Ricky Carmichael or like, you know, Stewart or Jet Lawrence, you're, but you're more like I have Mack. a lot of yeah, yeah, natural exactly. talent and experience on a dirt bike. You know what I mean? You can call it that. I mean, I could literally, like, last year, I, I mean, I stopped, I stopped, you know, I mean, I can wheelie all, all, any bike pretty much, but. Like last year, he last knows how to twist the throttle. <laughs> I yeah. know how to twist the grip. Yep, he knows which hand it's on. 
but last year <laughs> I quit for nine months off the bike because I had a shoulder and neck injury, and I, I was like this. Did you know, CBD help work. it? It did help, but it was a nerve thing, mm. so it only did so much. You know, like it was literally where like my nerve was causing me just to. It's not did like you go to a chiropractor. So when you re, when you I did, but I it was hurt so bad that I couldn't even lay down. Mm. Like it was, I couldn't even pop. It Get was, your wife to I was screaming. Like it was that bad. No, <laughs> it was like the worst pain I've ever had in my entire life. Almost, you know, it was, uh, even like I would rather, I told yeah, the chiropractor, pain. I'd rather break both my wrists at the same time again than have this pain. Like, yeah. Yeah, like at the same time. <laughs> that's why I love drones, bro. That's why I love drones. But I, but like I said, I, I got off the bike for nine months and I, and, and I, I feel like I won the mammoth, Yeah. you know, qualifier for mammoth. I, I mean, it's not like I ride that often. I have. I've had my what bike. Class are you to race the mammoth? Thirty plus A. Thirty plus A. We yeah. have to stack class. I, yeah. So I. But so I have it. Isn't, isn't uh, what like Hughes and Grant and all, all those guys? guys like yeah. McGrath, I think. Not yeah. McGrath anymore, but yeah. But there's there's definitely some fast fast dudes. A in lot there. of guys. I'm sure Trevor Stewart or something maybe. Yeah. That's that's. If I go there, I'm gonna try and sandbag it. I'm gonna sign up. I'm gonna change my name. I'm gonna sign up for thirty C. And I'm gonna see if I can just you know <laughs> go under the radar. There you go. Because <laughs> if I if I even if they even made me race thirty B. I would, I don't, I mean, would I qualify? I don't know. Is there enough guys to qualify? Like, do you, like, do you just guarantee? Uh, so they say that B's. there's going to be some spots available. So like if you yeah, signed see, up the right when the signups come out, yeah, then see, you might be able to get a spot in there. I would just, I would just ride it to just go slow and just say I rode Mammoth in the 30 C class. B I just class. want to get a whole shot, bro. Yeah? Honestly, like, uh, it'd I be cool to get a top 10. I would love to get a top 10. That's my, I know it's going to be tough, but I've been running. I've been Riding yeah, a little see, bit, and I so much a commitment, bro. It's a, it to, to be able to go and, and get working a, every day, get a know? bear in mammoth. Like the commitment to conditioning at for altitude. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be gnarly. I there. just do workouts in the sauna, so I yeah. do push ups in the sauna, yeah. tricep dips in the sauna. I'm like, it's like a year in the year in the making. I have a my dad's buddy's got an '86 year I was born '86 XR600. I was thinking about racing that one of the vintage classes. That'd be so fun. I probably have a better chance of, be of so doing fun. there, but it's got drum brakes on the rear, so I was thinking oh, of downhill. Like I may not have brakes halfway through the have race. The most fun you ever had. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, you know, if we would do like a little like a little restoration to it, throw yeah. disc brakes on Come it. Come next year. That's okay. 2025 mammoth. C yeah. Bud, C Martin, we're coming. Ooh, we're coming. Yeah. Vintage class, we're coming. Look out, Joe, Joe Bennett goes there every you can year. Give me a vintage bike, I'll race it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we got to run it. It kicks first start. But my bike, so this is how much I ride. Just to give you an idea, I've had my bike since December twenty twenty, and it's a twenty one. Uh, I've only, my bike only has sixty five hours on it, in, oh, in four years. I don't want to. I don't want to tell you you ride a lot, but. The dirt bike I rode last is a 2007 450 with less than probably 70 hours on it. Oh shit! That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I and I broke the rim too. The last time I rode, I accidentally. Oh shift- yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I accidentally shifted up over the finish line at Riverfront, and uh, you didn't crash, right? No, I like yeah. you know how when you're like super flat, you just like stand up and yeah. you land on. And I landed, and I, as soon as I landed, I was like, man, I probably cleared my rear fender. Like all the dirt's gone, and I go and look, and I was like, man, it didn't really hit that hard. I go around for the next lap and it was like tire was flat and I was like, oh, it's a good time to end the day anyway. I'm so happy I went, that you didn't crash. Dude, went to clean it and it had four cracks in the rim and I was like, Dang. I love drones. Yeah, I love yeah, drones. Like yeah. I was like, my my son keeps asking me like, there's no wheel on the back. He goes, no wheel. I said, yeah, I jumped too far. So my three year old's like, jump too far, jump too far. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. So yeah. oh, that's a good question. That's when funny. are you gonna? So when are you gonna get baby baby C on the on the beat? Dude, my on the, on the FPV drones. So oh, yeah. <laughs> honestly, my my six year old, I think he'll he might he might fly a little bit here in the future. But my three year old, he's like a, he wakes up in the morning, he's like me ride, me ride, like yeah, he's my a, son. That's that. exactly Dude, what Coach is saying. You have he's him on a, little Stasis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been he's been mobbing on the Stasis, and he's he's doing really good. Like he's already on his third helmet because he crashes so much. Like third full face, <laughs> like. So oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm concerned for his safety, but you know yeah. it's, it's that's awesome. Life, well, life I didn't moto. know you lived that close. I literally, I don't know why I thought you lived in Yuba City. I have no idea why. <sighs> no, Yuba. And Sorry, I love. The I don't tracks. know why I thought that. And, and uh, I thought it too. I so swear. Now we're gonna be hitting them up to, yeah. to rip a coaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sure. we run a muck around this town. Yeah, so yeah, I definitely gotta. We gotta get them linked up and riding. Yeah, yeah, man. And I gotta show you. You never been to the spot that I post. The one over there on uh, Rival 65? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we got to go over there, dude. Yeah. It's oh, so yeah. fun. Yeah. No, I that front there. area with the two berms is perfect for them. Yeah. You know, that's where I take them to mess around. Yeah. But, yeah, we got little rippers. They're 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 ripping out there. We're going to be – hopefully someday we'll have well, – Sacramento's not here anymore because me and Seabud in line, we'd be 
chattering back and forth i'm like a little shit 13 year old like yeah back in the day like who are you like stop talking to me yeah, i just take your money <laughs> you sign up in the pro class i was like yeah please sign please sign up and yeah. then once i actually covers... started winning it you weren't there anymore no i retired so i can't so i can't so i can't even say that i like yeah, even race, you. yeah. Nope. i never got to you nope Nah, nah. Well, hey, maybe you Isn't can start it? training again. Nah, <laughs> were nah. you guys at Sac Raceway in like 2009, 2008? It would, yeah, it would be literally like I was like seven, eight, and nine was probably the last years I did it. Like, wow, was that's like, funny. I was there too on like a fifty. And 65. Dang, yeah. where was it? At Sac Raceway, oh, I was really? probably there with you guys. Yeah, yeah. That, so that, fit, that yeah, finish line I was tape. On a little fifty, you guys. Were oh my, on I think I remember you. So yeah, right. Number yeah. sixty nine <laughs> with the orange hair on the air, yeah, orange yeah. KTM. Yeah. So that that finish six six. Yeah. No souls. Yeah, no soul. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think you have a soul, man. I, I, have to do, I always do one redhead joke on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, it's you're like gonna a get a strike tradition. for that, bro. You're gonna get a strike. Yeah. Yeah. 24. That's that's probably strikeable at this no, point. No, no, there's some savage videos no. on, on. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> take it back. Yeah, I take it back. Yeah, I know the finish line at Sac Raceway used to be fun. I could throw a heel clicker over that. You know, Hell yeah, act like it was real cool. You know, I've never done a heel clicker. You know, that's like the one trick I could do. I don't know what. I don't think I'm flex. Dude, my to hips go are so all the way up, up over the bars. Yeah. It's, it's gnarly. Yeah, I had a buddy. Uh, Brad, I'm not that flex. Brandon Powell we used to joke like who could do the bigger one leggers and stuff back at Riverfront and. And then I was like, you know, I, I could do a heel clicker. So I like try to kick myself in the head, and that was like my my signature move: kick myself in the head. So I go around, and then he's like, he did it <laughs> one time, funny. and so. I did a heel clicker and I just leaned into it and I was like, oh, I kicked myself with both feet. Yeah, you can't beat that. <laughs> yeah, so. there you go. But then I'll I threw my crash, bro. I, I could do yeah. no footers. Like I've done uh, when I was younger. I used to hit the BMX jumps. On oh like yeah, fives, yeah. The AMPM jumps. And oh yeah, yeah. And I'd hit the the middle booter and I actually <laughs> like learned how to do like no hand landers. Yeah. So like I could do stuff like that, but like That's see when I, I was, don't really do tricks though. See know, when I was on I an eight, when I was on eighty uh, Hollister Hills OHV Park, like they have like these really smooth jumps, and I met this other kid on an eighty. I was literally it was like right when I first started riding, and uh, like like before I even really started racing, and he was doing all these tricks. He was doing, like doing nothings, heel clickers. There was like the step up. He was doing all hand landers, and I was like, oh, I can do that. And so literally like in one weekend of camping, I went from like learning a no footer on a sixty to like. I was doing nothing. I learned heel wow. clickers, no hand or so landers. Sick. And I was just like, this is the greatest thing. I went and we got LBZ pants like right oh, after yeah. that. <laughs> had the baggy yeah. pants. I was like, this is the LBZ way. LBZ you you just you just totally gave me flashbacks to MX Crust. versus ATV Dude. when you said nothing. Because I remember like, doing that trick. I'm going to send bro. you a picture. Like I literally, my, my three-year-old yeah. has found the picture. And like he'll pull it out and he's like, look, no hand, no, oh, no feet. And I'm like, that's yeah. Sick. That's sick. Yeah, that was a uh, good days. Good days. Awesome. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, that's as you said flashback. So, what, uh, in your opinion, like for Moto, what's what's one of your favorite Moto movies? I mean, the original. I mean, honestly, Krusty Demon is a dirt, the original, and Steel Roots, one and two. Steel Roots, okay. Yeah, Cause those, we said Krusty, but yeah. uh, I don't think we've ever said Steel Roots. I don't yeah. think we've said Krusty before. I think we have. Have we? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah I think Krusty, I have. Krusty original and then Steel Roots. Steel despite. Roots, I haven't seen yeah. that one. Yeah, Jerry McGrath, Steel Roots. That was his first oh, one. Steel we'll Roots have to too. throw it up. We'll have to throw up a little uh, thing behind yeah, the we'll green screen. We got the, the green screen now, so we'll try to throw some things up Yeah, Steel Roots too is like when McGrath went to Yamaha, and it's funny because there's a kid who. Tatum Leba, who's really fast, I actually, uh, I did a video. They were like, hey, whatever song you want. And so he picked one of the, I picked one of the songs from Steel Roots. And his dad knew it. And he was, I was like, I was like, that's from Steel Roots. And he's like, huh? And I was like, I was like, it's a McGrath video. Go, I'll send you a clip. Check it out. But it's like <laughs> McGrath, like walking out on his Yamaha and stuff to the song. So. That's, that's sick. Yeah, that's yeah. a good move. Well, I haven't seen it, so I'll have to. You haven't I'll, seen Steel Roots? I don't think I. I probably well, you have, have no depth in motocross. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no See, yeah. there we go. No no and we're gonna have a. Acid. That's what our moto trivia is. That's probably like '97. That's what I'm saying. Long time I, ago. I probably have, but like I just, I, I'm so VHS. bad with names, dude. And like, and so those, like, those are VHS. I, I used to wear those things out all day. <laughs> I was the kid in, in school and you, you, I loved that song and then your friend would be like, what's the song name? I'd yeah. be like, I don't know. I just like the sound of the song. I don't yeah. know. Like, you know, it's funny though. It's, it's another favorite motocross movie. Is my three-year-old is now hooked on motocross. The Disney oh, movie. I, I watched oh, that yeah. literally Dude, like a, yeah. uh, like a, maybe five months ago with my it's, daughter. It's yeah. so corny, but my three-year-old, so he just yeah. watches it nonstop. He, he won't sit through any movie, cars, nothing, but wow. he'll have that on play. Like he'll just start saying stuff and I'm like, Dude. Really? This is yeah. your movie? You're three. Like, yeah. you're three. If they didn't have, like, Pastrana and McGrath in there and, like... Pastrana taking a girl out I wouldn't there. even... I wouldn't yeah. even Pastrana, how do you it? feel about that? Taking women out, yeah, you know? Hey, hey, Canceled. Yeah. Canceled. Yeah, yeah we're Canceled. right. But they, no, but they literally... And you hear Pastrana's taking a break. 
Yeah, dude. Yeah. He's messed. Honestly, he should retire. Dude, his he's, done, he's done everything. He's such a savage. He sacrificed he's such a savage. himself to, yeah. to the community. Yeah. He can retire and spend his time with his family. Like, you're good. You, you don't have to do any more, Pashana. That's how I feel. Like, if somebody you, were to ask me who's the most savage m- person in like motorsports, I'd probably say Pashana. He just never stopped. Yeah. Which is I mean, well, rally? He's a, yeah, he's a sick rally driver. Anything. Anything. Yeah. Anything he said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he literally That's like fast. helped make motor, freestyle motocross. Then he helped make rally cross. And he helped make Nitro or the, the what is it? The, uh, Nitro Ni- World Tour. Nitro World yeah. Tour. Yeah. Like Nitro as, X Ga- as X Games failed, like he's like, no, we're yeah. still going to keep a competition. Yeah. Like he's made so many things. His and the pit bike thing he has. Yeah, with all this stuff. Do it. Dude, like so all he it, may like, not ride in the future, but he's not going anywhere. His body you know? is. I, I, don't, see I don't know how he walks. Like I yeah, literally like. No. I can barely injuries, walk. Yeah, I don't even have his. Half the injuries. Yeah, how do you, and how do you I worry survive? about the dude sometimes just yeah. because but I know he's been knocked out so many times. Too you know, many times. and that's really rough on your brain. Just, so. just, just. He gets surgeries. Sit in a bubble. Like we've never. Have you got surgeries? I uh, just. I've never really got like knee, surgery. Knee but he race. gets. Like, he gets fixed up. Yeah, you know, but yeah. still, he's gnarly. Like yeah. very gnarly. Did you see the last post they just did the other day? And they're apparently building. He lit, there's some dude he woke up or something. He said he was joking. Probably. Yeah, no. The boat launch or whatever. Oh yeah, I saw oh, that. We gotta throw it up there. But yeah. like, I was like, what is crazy, this? Yeah, Literally, dude. the stuff he does is crazy. Hit him yeah. up for pools. That's what Travis was saying. If you want a, a, a above ground pool, he's got it. Flex yeah. seal, flex seal. And I, I know you're gonna be busy <laughs> as heck this summer, dude. But uh, we have my family owns a ranch with a little private lake on it. It's like 90 minutes uh, from from Granite Bay. So oh, hell yeah, you're welcome to come out. Uh, yeah, we got to make it weekend, happen. Nice. You know, we talked want, about it last uh, pod. If, bring the family, yeah. come hang out at the lake. Yeah. That's where that boat lives. So, you know, yeah. you should just. I was I was actually thinking to have just my birthday there again. Let's do it. Let's just yeah. have you out. My brother. Yeah. I mean, if you're available. Yeah, if you're yeah. available. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's pretty 8th. crazy. Like I'm, I'm basically uh, from here. So next next weekend is Salt Lake City for the championship. Mm-hmm. Then I, I got the weekend off, which I think there's like a couple of local motor motocross races. So I'm trying. I, I want to do as much local stuff as I can. Yeah, so yeah. I yeah. built like such like a like a family. I feel like yeah. so like shout out to all the local mo- NorCal exactly. guys. Like I, I, there's so many guys I was chasing who are 50s, who are on 60s or 80s now, or yeah. 80s, and they're on big bikes now. And it's like now I'm traveling. It's like I'm watching all their stories and all their stuff, and them getting faster. And it's like, dang, I want to go film them. Like yeah, yeah. I want to get out there. Like yeah. there's there's a couple kids, um, like Tyler Seckler, like who's was literally an 85 beginner. I was like, man, this kid's struggling. He's like battling for top five in the novice yeah. class at GFI. Like I'm like, dude, like that's crazy. Time, like time yeah, flies. yeah. You know, a lot of the 50 kids I'm I'm chasing who are I was chasing now they're like fast 65 kids or 80 kids. Yeah. You know? Wow. So it's it's really cool to see all those kids who I haven't seen and hopefully at the end of the year. But yeah, they basically have me from like here till I think it's like October, end of October, like almost yep. every weekend. Like I get yep. one weekend off and the family's like, stay with us. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I, I remember stay that. Home. Like so it's it's a struggle. That's one part you, I wasn't used to. If you don't mind me asking, do you take the family with you on these weekends? Or? So last year it was I didn't know where I was going, so yeah. it was like my nerves yeah, at an yeah. all time high. Same yeah. with Supercross. So this year, like my goal is like I, like my wife is gonna come down, my buddy Tony, his brother Sweet. and stuff. They're coming down to Paula, so we're doing like a couple days early, and then we're gonna stay down in San Diego an extra day. Sweet. So my goal is with this United Club thing that like I'll be able to be like, getting free flights for my family and be like, mm-hmm. okay. We're gonna make this round into a family vacation. This okay. round into a family cool. vacation. Maybe so. not every round, but you'll have them come out a few times. Exactly, because yep. it's yep. like like last year. My now that you know the ropes. Yeah, yeah my my, my six year old. I missed like five, four or five sack raceway races last year. Like I was like, that sucked. Like I, I hated missing those. My daughter had my daughter's pretty competitive in soccer and stuff and That's and sweet. football and stuff. And I'm like missing those things, and it's like, dang. Like I don't. I hate missing those things, but at the same time, it's like opportunity of a yeah. lifetime. Yeah. Like how am I gonna, you know. Not everybody needs to do this. Yeah, yeah. so I don't want to like bring on someone else to replace me, but like at a certain point in time, it may be like, okay, I'm building a team. Like, yeah. hey, I'm gonna take like these business, these yeah. twelve rounds. You take these twelve rounds, and then I'll take those ones and you know split yeah. it up. But I'm not sure. It's uh, so it sounds like you are thinking forward too. You know, I, I it's I was it was something I was I was talking to some other guys in camera and stuff, and just hearing about their lives and their traveling and stuff. And it's it's a grind. Like you wake up like. Friday morning, first thing in the morning, East yeah. Coast time. So you're yeah. three hours earlier. Yeah. You're getting out there. You're running all your stuff. You're setting everything up. And then you're basically sitting there waiting for rehearsal, do rehearsal, go home, run the show. And then as soon as you get back, load everything up in the hotel, first flight out in the morning, come home, try and enjoy the family on Sunday. But you're so you're like, also anticipating the next yeah, event. You're so and you're so worn out, like doing a tw- doing two 12 hour days traveling real quick. And it's like it's not just like, hey, like 
working 12 hours, it's like mentally draining yeah, under the goggles for hours. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, Hey, if anybody messes up, it's on yeah. nobody but me. So and there's no time error for error, really. Yeah, I mean, on live, like no it's room. like you do a little bobble. They're like, "Whoa, Chris!" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm sorry." Like New England was crazy. The wind was insane. So I was telling like, "Guys, don't take me over here." And like, "Nah, you look good." And I'm like, "Just a learning experience is really what it is." So mm. no, it's serious. so much stuff. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure you've learned so much it. stuff. Brain's like on a brain's always like just constantly something going on it's know? good we have adhd yeah man <laughs> you know for <laughs> we sure need we need for it sure. for this kind of stuff yeah just close my eyes sometimes calm down like all right and uh i'm pretty sure i'm allowed to ask but i know you weren't at denver i don't think we talked about that really yeah uh there was a bunch of stadiums that had said no like starting with arizona arizona was like no it's a no-go and then they gave us a big book and we we built off of them so we basically took our book that got us approved there and we're passing it around we went to texas and they were no drones, and like right before the race started, someone from legal came down, legal safety and or risk mitigation, come down and sit down and be like, hey, we've never let a drone in here before. And I'm like, well, that's great to tell me that. Like, wait a way to bring yeah. up my nerves even more. <laughs> like, let alone when we have an event, you're doing great. Can I look at the drone? And I'm like, yeah, here it is. And his first thing was like, wow, this is really small. This is really light. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's really tiny. I built yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it takes, I was like, yeah, it's, you know, it's specifically for this. You know, we slowed it down to make it fly longer. We try and keep it as light as we can. And they basically were like, hey, everything you provided to us was like above and beyond what we've ever asked for. Like, we're real excited for you guys coming in and we appreciate it. And I was like, dang, so maybe I'll be able to do some other, uh, other events with Cowboys or their stadium. So, but uh, um, Man, yeah, so sick. So Denver was the same way. They're like, no. And then we went to Philly, and they had said no. And like right before, like three weeks before Philly, like, hey, let's go ahead and just do it. Mm -hmm. So someone from Philly came down. Their head security guard runs security for even the uh, the Super Bowl and stuff for NFL. Was like, hey, everything you guys are doing is amazing. Like we love all the documentation, all the insurance. He was down there like four different times, like filming me. And I'm like, all right, head security guy, don't mess up. Like. He's like filming me every like I was like, why is he down here so much? And then at the end of the day, he's like, Hey, wherever you go, like just use my name. Like drop my name and I'll I'll like I'll tell him like I trust you guys, like I'll have you guys' back. And so this weekend Denver happened, there were no drones and we dropped his name and they're like, Yeah, you guys are uh you guys are good next year then. So Sweet. it's this was a, cool. a learning year and now it's like last year we expected five or six. Next year we'll probably do all seventeen. Sweet. So that's so sick. it's crazy. <laughs> Hopefully I can say all that stuff. If I do get in trouble, we'll cut it out later. But yeah, I think I, that's all good. Yeah, I don't think I, it's yeah. it no, seems pretty general stuff. Because I mentioned the no bro names. the brother thing that you weren't there for, and I just didn't really. Yeah, no, talk it was it. no, it was. Uh, it's definitely a. It, it's a learning experience. Like I said, a lot of these yeah. stadiums are like no drones. We've never had it's about them in safety. There. I mean, in the end, I understand. We're not bagging on anybody. You know what I mean? So yep. we understand there's protocols. I mean, you have a license. You literally like show yeah. these people like what you can and can't do too, yep. you and know. So we're it's all about safety. As long as everybody's safe, and that's yep. all that matters. You yeah, know? we actually two weeks before Philly actually got contacted by air traffic control because I have to like I have to put a request out for the airspace that I'm using, exactly, yeah. and they're like, "Hey, make sure your presidential TFRs are covered and stuff." And I was like, "My presidential." So what? I said, "Why?" They like, oh, the president will be flying over. Just make sure you got your covered for it. And I was like. And then wow. like he's like he's like actually what? yeah he's like oh, actually wait a second oh your race is the your events the weekend after okay just be prepared we'll let you know in seven days if you need to have all your presidential credentials uh, lined up and stuff and just because he's flying over a drone yeah, well because he would be landing within so many miles of oh. the stadium well, and the airport and they got those drone bombers yeah and all the kind of crazy stuff so yeah, it's crazy so I literally as soon as he as soon as air traffic control called me I called my boss said hey we might have to do this this and this and he's like. They called you? And I was like, yeah. I, was like, I said, don't worry. I said, well, I, I know the steps in the process. I got on the FAA site. It's lined everything up. So if that did happen, they don't tell you like a month in advance when the president's coming in. It's seven days before. So yeah. like you just kind of watch the map. And as soon as, as soon as that seventh That's day crazy. within comes in live, we knew Monday before it still hadn't shown up. So we're like, all right, we're clear. Called up to you. I called up the, the air traffic control. I was like, yep, you guys are good. We let the stadium know. They're like, hey, thanks for being prepared. We didn't actually get that notification. Um, so we appreciate you guys letting us know that that was even on the radar. So, yeah, it's a uh, that's, that's gnarly. Yeah, there's there's so much more like like the safety precautions I took at local events versus now is yeah a hundred times higher. Yeah. Like it's yeah. crazy. The so. president the president's coming through. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And what what have yeah. we been seeing so, since the? Uh, yeah. You don't know me. Since <laughs> all that footage from the UK, Ukraine and Russia front line with those FPV drones attacking each other. I mean, that shit is crazy, bro. Like, I mean, just a touch war on, has changed forever now. Just you a know? touch on that. Uh, China actually, when their uh, video surfaced, said that they actually banned all export of all drone equipment for a month. So a lot what? of stuff I buy like comes from DJI. there. DJI like, well, isn't DJI D- Chinese? Yeah, DJI, but like even like the flight controllers down to the motors yeah. down. Yeah. I mean, prope- even propellers, like anything drone related that was in yeah. my class, class like classification. They basically like one month, they're like nope. So I basically Man. everybody was like in a panic. And, and it's I, already three to six weeks out. You told me. Oh on the yeah. Last so I, yeah. So, so I bought everything at all the local shops I could. I stocked up for the full year. I was like, if and then it, they unbanned it, but it was, yeah, stuff's yeah. real. So. Yep. Hope they get yeah. that stuff cleaned up. Yeah, let's do yeah. it legit. Because that could be a setback. I mean, like, you literally said on the last pod, like when things go out, it's not people just think, oh, it's just easy. It's like, no, I got to wait three to six weeks for some of these parts sometimes. Yeah. you know. So. Yeah, I basically at this point, I have a stock enough where I could build drones for basically the rest of the year. Yeah. Now you have stuff. to, especially yeah. now that your contract is like, they're like, what do you mean you didn't order that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's not even a question. It's like, yeah, we're you better we're order a hundred of those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, are there are there more like drone shops starting to pop up, or is it still like down. pretty niche? Really? Yeah, there's more really. shutting down because of the online stores and stuff yeah so like there was actually a company in sac that actually like custom built everything from motors to he had like he had a company that would even produce his own boards like his branded stuff wow. and he went out of business because on there's like there's like three big manu- manufacturers like pyro drone um race day quads and get fpv they're like here in california's pyro get fps like central and then or get fpvs florida and then one of them central and so you basically just buy from one of these three. Got it. And then everybody else is kind of like just small little stores. So yeah. you got to pay so much for shipping and yeah. they won't have stock or whatever. So it's it's definitely still a niche and especially FAA. Like I have to run like a module that like broadcasts who I am as I fly. Like Yeah. So pretty, you, you pop up on the radar. Yeah. That wasn't you a thing last year. you talk to them at all or no? No. I, I mean okay. there's things you can do okay. to do that kind of stuff. If I don't mind. Yeah. Okay. But this basically just as soon as I fly. So it, it, it goes off. That wasn't a law um, last year. So yeah. now it's like. Like, oh, FA is clamping down. So a lot of people are like, I don't even want to deal with that. Like, I'm not even going to get into this hobby. Yeah, this is evolving. How does yeah. it How does it feel now that you, like, know you're, I mean, you're more big time now on, on the drones, right? <laughs> yeah. So think about it like they know, you know, the government knows that you're 100%. a uh, drone flyer. So how does it feel that you know that someday you could get a phone call from the government <laughs> saying, Chris, Seabud, we need you. To fly this drone. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you, I was actually, I was contracted by a, uh, a company that has NASA contracts. And uh, they actually made me sign an NDA, but I yeah. didn't sign an additional contract with them. So I'm going to just talk about it. Yeah. I don't think I can control for it. But it was basically like um, they wanted me to teach astronauts on how to f- fly using a software. And I was just like thinking to them, like, I was like, guys, I got my dream job already. Sorry. They're like, yeah. but you could tell them you teach astronauts. And I was like. Yeah, that sounds cool, but I'm chasing motocross and supercross. You know what it is? Yeah. And they're like, okay, but you want this? I was like, if you pay me like, I made like a crazy number. I was like, this is if you want to pay me this much, I'll do it these couple days. And they're like, ah, yeah, we can't afford you. I was like, that's okay. All right, have a great day. We can't afford. Yeah, Yeah. you're gonna. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, stick with what you love. Yeah, because it was something so new. Like it was what they were asking me to do. I was like, it was originally they're like, oh, you can work two days a week, and we'll remote call you in and stuff, and. I was like, oh, this sounds good. And they're like, oh, but we need you like for these days and you need to have this and that. And I was like, you guys, this is way more. Like I'm traveling the country yeah. right now. Like I, when I fly in on Sunday, like I'd like to spend time with my family. Like if this, like this sounds like a great job. And if you're willing to pay me some crazy yeah. amount of money, like sign me up. But otherwise I got, I got my dream job. The right only now. way it would be cooler than supercross and motocross and SMX is if the moon landing was real. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and that, that was kind of the thing, you know, shout out to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to uh to, to we're Rand- going there yeah <laughs> yeah you know i, ha- I have that uh the debate with uh one of the dads randall he uh he actually flew sr-71 so he actually flew in outer space so i sent him all my flat earth uh memes and videos and stuff and he's I was like i saw the curve and so i was like did you and I'm like checkmate and i sent it to him and he's like no, I saw the curve. I, was like, uh, I mean, <laughs> but you're also, he signed an NDA, so he can't really tell you whether it's all or not. So He's a, pi- he's a pilot for Southwest still. So they're going to tell you the only thing you can say is that you saw the curve. Randall, I'm calling you out. You know, we send these messages and you always tell me it's round, but who knows? Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying, I, this is a thing, just to clarify for him and me. Just because I think it's, there's some good facts that maybe I think it could be flat or the, or 
the moon landing is fake. no way it's flat. Whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Anything I think I know could be wrong. So it's like, I'm not saying I know for 100%. You also raise It dirt. is a little weird. Here's the thing. This is what you I know? always figure. Every time I have a thought that's kind of crazy like that, I just think about how many concussions do I have? A lot. <laughs> I, yeah. I, have, I was just talking yeah. about that the other day. Like, Yeah, uh, I'm, a, I'm a good 10 plus. So it's yeah. like, you know... I, you know, that's what Joe some, Rogan says. He says things, I don't know anything. I don't. I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, it sounds like. I mean, I see some compelling videos, and I I'm see. like, "Ooh, Earth is flat." And then I talk to Randall, and he's like, "No, Chris, it's not. Look, see, here's my spacesuit. See, I was in outer space." And I'm like, "You know, I probably never meet another person that like went to outer space, and yeah. so I can at least like, ah, oh, okay, well, maybe I should believe him." And the cool part he's about got way less con- way less concussions than us too. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the cool part about it though is even if it was flat, it's not going to change your life. You still got to pay bills, pay your <laughs> yeah, taxes. Right. So cry right. about it, people. Still got to yeah. pay the bills. Go cry the about it if you don't money. like what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, All right, so okay, let's just wrap this up with a uh, just the moto, a couple questions off the moto trivia. All right, so the, this is the moto death segment. And right. Cameron, <laughs> Cameron uh, typed out this, these questions himself, right. so he's yep. pretty proud of this right here. I'm proud of it. So what happened? I thought I already went to. Let's see moto trivia. Here. Let's go. So we only got we only got my question and his questions. Those were good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to work on the Instagram. Yeah. I'll start tagging anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm gonna do some good shorts on this pod for sure. Yeah, we're gonna we, be posting. We set it up a little of, different. We're closer yeah. than normal. Yeah, so okay. it's gonna like, be more think, good quality. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I, we're gonna try and post like sometime next week. Nice. So. Oh, and just real quick before I start this, I forgot to ask. Uh, remember uh, Daytona? Yeah, didn't get to do it. You didn't get to do it. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so turned, I was gonna. Turned, I, I yeah. know that you can't fly over people. So my question was gonna be like, how did that work with yeah. the light? You so know? They, Daytona actually uh, was one of the only other ones that denied us, and um, I think it's because they they've got another drone company that they've like got some contracts worked with. I mean, I don't want to mm. like say like something yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. true, but yeah. it just there's one drone company that flies there. Yeah. And did they, they have drone? No, they didn't have okay. a drone. So, so they, they fly NASCAR though, yeah. and so NASCAR has even stricter policies yeah, than, than yeah. motocross does. So we were like, hey. We we approve them like why can't and they they run a lot of the broadcasts so Daytona was like no so hopefully next year because that's like the one I was like how does yeah, drones not be so in Daytona sick, dude like how could they not wait so those drones know, that's those... the best freaking that's my literal favorite track yeah. I know it's everybody's yeah, favorite yeah. but I'm not conforming I just love it those FPV <laughs> drones can keep up with NASCARs now no they only do like uh they'll do like the burnout the end okay, they'll do NAS okay. they'll do like the Got pit it. stops or yellows so they okay. that's all they do is Got it. but they fly massive drones with these yeah, huge yeah, yeah. cameras and okay. stuff you could, so. I mean you could still like fly ahead of it right and see it go by yeah I mean, I'm not gonna name I'm not gonna name the company because I don't want to give them any yeah. more clout you know yeah Sorry. no because bud sky came way bigger oh Absolutely. shout out if you hear, hear me uh yeah. pat <laughs> you should give a shout out to is that dude that made a video of your drone oh yeah dude that yeah, was we talked oh, was about his name again at the beginning yeah, yeah, yeah I, I forgot to say that i like to like trying to remember things yeah. yeah no i uh it was pretty cool i've never uh i've never had anybody do a video of my drone so russ o graffy um, on well, Instagram. I'll tag him in the uh, video description. Yeah, we'll throw a little. We'll yeah. throw your Instagram up there. Give you some yeah. love. I saw yeah. it. It's a pretty sick video. Yeah, man. Video, yeah, video so. in my drone. Like it's usually like, my drone's doing the videoing, and my drone yeah, got yeah. video. You, that's you don't cool. see that. And it was clear. It was actually good quality. Yeah, so if anybody in. wants to go look at it, we'll throw it up. But it's a good quality video. Yeah, go shoot absolutely. him a follow. Yeah, he needs more likes on that video because yeah. it was amazing. Yeah, it's just popped um, up today. All right, let's do this trivia. All right, here we, first question. Oh, can't see the answer. No peeking. All right. In 2024, oh, okay. <clears throat> who won round two of Monster Energy Supercross San Francisco? A. Cooper Webb. B. Jet Lawrence. C. Ricky Bobby. D. Aaron Plessinger. Oh, so 250 class. Um, no, 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 no. 450, 450 class. 450, yeah. What year again? 2024. This year. Oh, this 2024. Year. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. 24. Oh, I, I always sound. I, I think said it's 2004. Th- sorry. Yeah. I, no. I swear yeah, you thought yeah. I said that earlier. <laughs> I think he you thought did. I said that yeah. earlier I when I was reading did. this off. All right, so 2024. What? San Francisco? Yeah, who won? Yep. A. Cooper class. Webb. B. Jet Lawrence. C. Ricky Bobby. D. Aaron Plessinger. I think it was Cooper Webb, wasn't it? Is that your final answer? No. AP didn't win it, did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah that was the one he won. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, he he was a badass in the mud. We'll give him a was wash it? on that all question. Right, all right. Yeah. All right. I knew he won one of the mudders. I just couldn't. I remember he lost one of the mudders yeah. right there too. Yep. Question two: In 2024, A one, who had the fastest 450 qualifying lap time in Group A? Oof, this is. I tough. think I was like, wasn't it like uh, Sexton? It was Lawrence. I, was Lawrence. Lawrence. I wasn't yeah. there, so I don't know. Anaheim. I think I actually I shouldn't have told you. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Dan- Anaheim denied us, so I'm hoping we get into there. This I've year. had these questions oh, wow. for a while. Yeah, they denied. Yeah, <laughs> Anaheim, Indianapolis, Denver, and 
I think those are all the ones. That well, hopefully they see. see this, and we know the safety concerns, and he's very good at it. So, very good. just he, and he's a pro. I mean, he races them, he builds them. I mean, this dude's the jack of all trades when it comes to drones. So. Scout's on, and I promise not to crash. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, <laughs> yeah. I promise yeah. not to crash. Yeah. <laughs> that is wood too, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> question three: Which rider in 2024 Supercross season one, or I'm sorry, season at A1 made the main? And also got a solid top six for his first Supercross race, and this is going to be in. My Prada. This is going to be a uh, 250 class. Oh, 250 class. So A, Max Volan. B, Jolene Bemer. Bemer. So, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I knew that one. Yeah. All right. Because I was right. surprised to me. I was like, dang, this kid. I wish he would have done better the rest of the year. But yeah. so there's some other questions. There's some not just Supercross ones. I threw some other All ones. Right. Who played the stunt rider in the movie Triple X in the scene where Vin Diesel jumps over the exploding Ooh. barn? Isn't that Carrie Hart? A. Brian Deegan. B. Twitch. C. Jared Stanky. It's Twitch. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. All right. Got it. Twitch. That was yeah. a gnarly jump yeah. over that house, too. Yep. Yeah. All right. Five. Who starred in the movie Fresno Smooth? A. Jeff Emick. B. Tony Hawk. C. Tony Little. D. All of above. Emick. Come on. D. All of the above. Oh, it was. Oh, because oh, Tony yeah. Hawk is in there, too. Yeah. Oh. All these dudes. Dang. Were. I thought uh, all things is Fresno Smooth and Emick. Yeah. You know? <laughs> All right, all right. C. Trick question. Oh, C. I'm sorry. I was right. Six, not C. In recent times, which rider do fans consider the devil of Supercross that causes the most problems? A. Ooh, J- Vince Freezy. There right? you go. You yeah, go. Yeah, hey, yeah. funny story about him. He yeah. came and sat down. I was at a, one of the races in Texas, and I have like my own little roped off spot, and he came over, and he was standing behind me. He's like, hey, can I watch that? And I was like, no. I was like, I'm just kidding. You can watch it. <laughs> yeah. And then he came back over later. He's like, hey, can I sit down? I was like, yeah, if you do, you get disqualified. He's like, really? I was like, nah, man, I don't care. You can sit down. And you can start laughing. <laughs> he goes, so how do you just like fly it around? I go, yep, I just fly it around. That's he's a sick. nice guy. I hear all over from people that yeah. he's a nice guy. And I honestly was a little disappointed last weekend at Denver where you weren't there. He got, I'm pretty sure he got the whole shot. Yeah. And they didn't even mention him getting yeah. like they were like Jet Warren yeah, yeah. this and I'm like yeah. I'm sitting there like I'm your advocate here dude like you know what I mean like I know people are hating but it's like yeah well, maybe you made some mistakes and you didn't do the right things but just because maybe one you're day not, that's not you off the track so yeah. like I was just he's. Uh, underdog and i feel like if he could just get that speed up he could be running top three so i when you get a if you know underdog gets a whole shot he needs to be mentioned i don't care if he's the devil of supercross or not <laughs> you need to mention him so yeah. i'm the advocate for that yeah so i, <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. people are gonna hate on me for that but um, uh they are he it's rubbing his I racing mean, he's, rubbing he's, his racing he's you know, done you gotta, some some stuff beyond rubbing first too, place but. is a hundred thousand dollars i'm pretty sure so you know I mean, I've taken people out for 150 bucks. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. So you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've literally cleaned some dude at o- OTGH or whatever. <laughs> over the hill gang. Over the hill gang. Literally <laughs> cleaned him. And he, we almost got in a fight and everything. I, and he told me, that's not racing. And I, and I pulled the money out of my pocket. And I said, looks like it is racing because I just got this money. So and that was like and two that, years and ago. And that's when they took your uh, over the hill gang license. Yeah. Yeah. Scott yeah. Allen. And you're old, never welcome That was back, Scott Allen? Cameron. Scott Allen was there to witness this whole thing go oh, down. So Scott, so, you, it wasn't Scott. You no, no, no. Scott. He's my boy. He's cool. I love Scott. Yeah, Scott's Shout cool. out. But uh, but he I actually met him at Grass Ranch back in the day. Yeah, and Scott's a good dude. He's a good dude. Yeah, he got he uh, he took me up in a motorhome one time or a trailer. He's so good. He's stay. such a nice guy. And Axel broke in it, and then he made me sleep. Me and my dad sleeping in a trailer like with no wheels on it. And we were like, "Is this thing gonna fall over?" <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Shout out to Scott. Appreciate nice. it, Scott. He's, good, yeah. he's really nice. I mean, yeah. he's always been super nice, nice dude. and he yeah. always invites me. I just I'll never have time to go give me the shirt off his back. But yeah. He's always like, "Come out to the track." He used to invite me on the boat all the time. Yeah. And I just like barely have time for shit back then. You yeah. know, he's a good dude. Um. All right, here we go. Let's do a couple more. 2019 at Arlington. Who won the battle slash race between Cooper Webb and Ken Roxon in the 450 SX main event? A. Ken Roxon. B. Cooper Webb. C. Ken took out Cooper and himself and Anderson won. D. Cooper took out Ken and himself and Anderson won. I don't chase the battle, so I don't remember that. It's like a famous battle, but I know it's like. A yeah, long see, time that's. Now. I can't see, remember that one either. See, I want to say that it was. Did it. I don't know if he took out Webb or Webb. Did he take out Webb? I feel like there was some kind of touch over, and then he took him out. Or I don't know if he went down. Is the answer C? It's B. It's B. He won. Did he? Yeah. yeah. He, I just I'll did it because that. they just posted that on Instagram. Oh, did they? So that's why I gotcha. kind of got the question from. I remember there was one race where Ken like uh, had a nice pass that I filmed, but the lead's hard for me. That's the one thing like doing what I'm doing. Like 
I don't really even get to know like what happened during the race. Like I hear it, but yeah. I'm so focused on the battle in the Absolutely. back that like I miss the lead a lot of times. And except for a couple of times where Daniel, the other drone pilots, flown outside and they just had me like fly everything. Um, but yeah. Okay, I got one last question. Are you uh, when you get home after the weekend? Are you rewatching the broadcast, or are you like I don't want anything to do? No, nah, so I'm actually watching it in the hotel. Yeah, at night. Awesome. Like I'm turning it on. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's like you watching yourself ride. Yeah, yeah. it's. Yeah. I gotta see this. Yeah, on the way home, <laughs> and it's uh, a. Yeah, they mention my name. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's and it's a lot of times now. It's like okay, what could I do better? Because when I'm flying, I can't see all the graphics overlays. And it's like if I'm too close or I line the rider oh, up in the wrong spot, yeah. the battle will actually be covered and I won't even see it. And mm -hmm. so I've put like elements in my display to like pop up because regular camera guys, they've got a feed that they get to see all those things so mm -hmm. they can adjust their camera. And me, I'm just like, it should be over here in my feed and I'm just so adjusting you got to that. watch it back to improve. The, yeah, exactly. The next round. Yep, I'm seeing things yep. like I bought a device to make my colors better halfway through the year because I just I felt like it wasn't. It wasn't right. It wasn't what I was seeing. And yeah. it's got a lot better about halfway through the season. If you go back and watch like the shots from the beginning of the season to like right now, my colors match way better than the other cameras. That's so, awesome. That's awesome. Uh, just learning. Yep. So continuous improvement. Yep. Well, should we wrap? Yeah. Uh just want one more look a couple just one more local question. This okay. one's a trick Here. question trick question. Mm. All right. All right. <clears throat> Who's the first person to land a backflip on a dirt bike? A Kerry Hart, B, Caleb Allen Wyatt, C, Jose Yanez, D, Travis Estrana. Well, I don't, I don't know if you can, I mean, does Kerry Hart's count as a landed? I mean, a lot of people say he did it, but he like crashed. That's why it's a trick question. Yeah. So he like crashed. Um, is it Yanez? Yep. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Trick question. Yeah. That means you win it all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. He's yeah. got death, baby. He's got death. <laughs> <laughs> don't know me, son. And, uh, and just the one last question before we end it. Before I thank you for everything, yeah. um, what's the gnarliest crash this season or throughout motocross or supercross that you've seen while you're drone flying? Man, I'm trying to think of a crash. I mean, I've seen, uh, I don't even know. I've seen some good ones. I saw like the very beginning of supercross, I caught Jet crashing pretty hard, and he like, that was like a, just after Anaheim, whatever, the second, San Diego. I got him crashing. That was a pretty good crash. I don't, and then I got that opening line, that opening crash at uh, Supercross when Adam Cincerillo like announced mm. his retirement right yep. after it. Yep. It was like Vince, or it wasn't Vince Freezy. It was a uh, what was it? Uh, whoever was it? It was whoever his teammate is. I'm freaking. I'm freaking. Oh, uh, oh, it was a haunt. It was on a haunt, and he crashed. I'm blanking on his name, but he crashed, and then everybody like ran him over. Like that one was pretty What's gnarly. His name? But honestly, I've had I've had amateur crashes that were more gnarly, like yeah. worse breaks and stuff. That just well, yeah, me because go. I mean, yeah, the pros yeah. Are, and the yeah. pros. There's a reason why they know how to crash. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, they get off pretty. I good. got my I got my techniques myself. When I crash. Yeah, exactly. They get off <laughs> yeah. pretty good. So, so were you there for the Forkner one? Uh, I no, I was chasing the battle behind, okay, so I didn't okay. see that one. But I did get Ken Hawkins' so crash where he broke his leg. I got that one too. Oh, so I'd say God. that one was really bad. Yeah, and I literally turned around like right as it was coming because I was like saying like, "Hey, Ken's coming forward." So I literally turned around to drop back to watch Ken. And as I like, I 180 and turn around, Ken's like coming at me and his legs are coming off and I just like stop. And he comes right at the drone. And I'm just kind of like, I'm trying to fly back. You weren't able to post that one, huh? No, that one's on my, on my Instagram. Yeah. So you should be able to oh, we got to throw that one yeah. up. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Cause I got it. His opening lap, he was going so fast. Like he was, he passed Jet, he passed Anderson, caught up to Tomac. And I was like, dang, he's going I fast. Love, I, dude, we're, I, we just did the F. We won't do it right now because it's, we need to get going, but the F Mary kill. Sometimes we'll do that. We did. We did <laughs> yeah, the F Mary yeah. kill, and I ended up having to uh, kill Roxon. F Roxon. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> whatever, whatever makes you happy, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever <laughs> floats your boat. Favorite. You no, it's because listen. It's, <laughs> it's because there was a. It's because there we had like a the monster looks, girl, oh, and then yeah. we had it was like who was it? You chose Jet for me and Roxon, mm -hmm. and I can't F the monster girl because yeah, I have a married. wife. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to take one for the team. Yeah. I always get the, I get the monster girl yeah. three sixty shot a lot. My wife said yeah. you you like that shot. Don't <laughs> you make, I'm you like it's the director. I'm saying it's the director shot. At least she can make fun of me, dude. You know, yeah, it was a guy, but like I didn't want it. Like I just had to. Had to. You know. Yeah, keep so the marriage. Of we'll, her we'll throat holding you know? the uh, thirty second board up. Yeah. That's the yeah. But yeah, Roxon is I love Roxon. I wish he like, I just want him yeah. to win. And I fun fact, I used to stay at Kenny Watson's house. I've stayed oh. at his house with Zach Thinger. Dang. And like he got we rode with Twitch. Uh we were actually in the half a joint video. I don't even think it's on YouTube anymore, I don't think. Got but it was stroke. a half a joint got video. A we went out there and I don't know, maybe because it's called half a joint. Probably. <laughs> uh, I went to look for it, it's not there anymore. But we were in that video with and he got us to ride with them. We got to stay at his house and uh, got to go to A1 and all, meet um, 
tickle. I got the oh, meat yeah. rock tickle and all yeah. that. It was really cool. So Hell yeah. But yeah, so thank you, dude, so for much sure. for coming. I appreciate it. It's, maybe we could do more now that you we know you live so close. Yeah, it's 10 minutes and, away. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know that. So now it's going to be even easier. Uh, if you want to get a hold, we'll put all his info. Like I said, the last pod, we got pod two and now pod 11. I got a website yeah, now. Yeah, got a website. BudSkyCam.com. Let's definitely do it again after yeah. the, the outdoor season. Yeah. Just yeah. talk and, and get updated. Get super know? motorcross right we after this. officially been on the podcast more than anybody. Oh, yeah. 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 Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Thank cool. You, bro. That was it. That was a good... Thank uh, you guys for Great pod. Thank you. Like, subscribe, hit him up on you Instagram. You'll see him at the if you see him at the local races, say what's up to him. Yeah. Even if he's flying, he's like a video yeah. gamer. So just say what's up, you know. Prices went up ten times. Yeah. <laughs> and hey, just just to touch on that, every year prices go up. Yeah. We gotta pay more bills. Yep. You know what I mean? So you gotta you gotta the expenses go up. That's sure. the way it goes. Yep. All right. Later, Thanks guys. guys. Appreciate it. Later, guys.